Amazing. Yes. What a joy it is to come to you by way of television. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker, and this is my darling, darling baby. <laughs> My sweet and sexy lady. <laughs> oh man, I just sorry. I just can't resist it. I'm telling you what. I realize I'm I'm coming to you on Christian television, but I tell you what, this awesome, extraordinary, mighty woman of God. Let me tell you something about her. She is amazing. We've been married over 30, mm, 32 years and counting. And uh, she has been amazing. And one of the things that, that, that I found in this season that's so amazing, every single morning she gets up at, at 6 o'clock. Well, she gets up before 6, but from 6 to 6.30, every morning, Monday through Friday, she prays heaven down. Yes. I, yes, yes. yes. And what's so amazing is, you know, most people have a bad day. I have yet to see her have a bad day in prayer. You know, most people flop. One of, you know, I remember when I first became an evangelist back in the day and traveled, uh, I, I hit rock bottom on one of my messages. I mean, I just, boom, you know, flopped like big time. And so I've always since then said I'm, I'll never flop because I'm going to depend on God. So I know that she's depending upon God every single morning as she lifts up uh, prayer requests and pray. So we're going to give you a number that you can call in. It's Eastern Standard Time. If you want to prayer, make a prayer request and call in, I'm telling you what, she can get a prayer request to God for you. No, no, no doubt in my mind. Right, right. She can get a prayer request answered. Yes. But listen, don't touch that down. We have an exciting show for you today. We want to deal with a toxic relationship. Wow. You know, a lot of times people don't wow. realize that they're in a toxic relationship. They don't even realize it. They're, they're, the toxic relationship has just gotten the best of them, and they're just going through the motions, and life is miserable. So I'm going to share with you, we're going to talk about how to distinguish and know when you're in a toxic relationship. That's good. Yes. That's and one, good. Of the, one of the things that you can know about a toxic relationship is they constantly warring against you. This war time. I mean, they wake up in the morning, warm with you. You go to the job, they warm with you. They go. You come to church, and they warm with you. <laughs> you have a toxic relationship yes. when a person is constantly warring with you. I mean, for no reason whatsoever. You have no clue. Just all of a sudden, you find yourself fighting with them, and you're like, "What's up with this? What's this all about?" Right. Out of the clear blue sky, they war right. with you. That's a toxic relationship. And let me tell you something. It's not healthy. Anything no, toxic not. is poison, and it will kill you. It'll kill your spirituality. Yes. It will hinder you from moving into your greatness mm -hmm. and becoming extraordinary and becoming the amazing human being that God called you. Right. And it's, it's difficult if you're trying to live life powerfully. Right. You're trying to live life on purpose, intentional, right. Right. and you got a toxic relationship that's working against you. Because it's like being in a, in a, in a room and, and you're just being smothered by gas that fumes that just, just toxic and you, it's, it's just killing you. And it's destroying your life. And anytime you have a toxic relationship, you got to bring that to a closure. You have to. You have to you deal have with to. that toxic relationship. And you know what the sad thing about it is, and we all have been there in a toxic relationship, we think it's going to get better. Yes, we do. Yeah, we think it's going to get yes. it, it won't get better by itself. You have to make some necessary changes. Because if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. That's true. So you got to make sure that you do something different to turn that toxic relationship That's around. Right. Because good. it will destroy you true. if you don't destroy it. That's right. That's good. Yeah. Berdella? That's true. Yeah. That's true. What, what I learned about uh, toxic relationships and warring with people, you say, how did it start? They could be controlling. You could say, we're going to go out to dinner. It doesn't have to be a husband and wife. It could be friends. And you go out to dinner. You're ready to order. You want a hamburger. And they want you to order this. And you say, no, but I don't want that. And then they get angry with you because you didn't get it. Then you go home or you're riding in the car and they're still fighting with you over a hamburger. <laughs> But they, they war with you because there's something going on inside of them. Yeah. They're angry with their own life, and, and something has happened. Something has, has, has struck them as a child, 
And so what they couldn't get or what they couldn't do or how they couldn't act or whatever, then now they're, they're bringing it out. It's an outlet now against everyone who comes in their, their life in a relationship. Yes. And it's, it's just not good. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. It's not good. So, so how do we overcome a toxic relationship? Because our viewers... Are... <laughs> <laughs> My darling, darling baby said run. <laughs> But 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 <laughs> say if you're married in that situation oh. and, and, and you just can't pick up and leave. You can't run because you're married, but yet it's a toxic relationship. What you have to learn as in a toxic relationship, you got to teach that person by example. In other words, when they're toxic, let it not bother you. Don't let them get the satisfaction of knowing that it's affecting you. That's the best way to handle it because... If, they, if it's not going to affect them, they're going to eventually quit because it's not working. So they're not going to continue if it's not working. So once you get to a place where you can handle it yourself, because keep in mind, a toxic relationship, God is using that person to grow you now. Now, don't forget that. All right, I better say that again. In a toxic relationship, God is using that person to grow you because they will reveal the real you. And, but the real you has to be strong enough and powerful enough to not to be affected by the outside. Because it, keep in mind that you have a space inside of you that you can guard and you can protect. And you can keep people from entering and invading that mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. That space you can guard. You can put an alarm system on it. Put some locks on it. Uh, I mean, put a fireproof uh, electric uh, fence or something around it. Where if they, they, if they get close to it, they're going to get shocked or something. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you have to guard that space. You cannot let them evade your space. And once they find out they can't, then they'll settle down. Yeah. But as long as they can push your button and get you to a place where you've been out of shape, then the enemy is using them. We understand that. I mean, because the, the word of God is clear that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right, yeah. I mean, contrary to what you might think, uh, yeah. your wife is, sir, your wife is not your enemy. I want you to know that. <laughs> You're thinking, man, I can, she's not your enemy, nor is your husband and, and your boss. None of those are your enemy. You think that they are. You think that your children may be your enemy. You think, you think various people are your enemy. No, they're not your enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's demons and devils that are targeting you to discourage you, to keep you from moving into your greatness, to keep you from being an extraordinary, powerful, mighty human being. So you got to take charge over the things that's trying to take charge over you. You got to take authority over the things that's trying to take authority over you. And don't give any place or opportunity for them to discourage you. The joy of God is your strength. You got to keep your joy. You got to stay, stay, <laughs> stay happy. You got to stay ex excited, ignited, enthused, and infused. Because if the enemy can take your joy, yeah. he can take your goods. Right. So you don't let him take your joy. Oh. Smile your way, praise your way through, be excited your, your way through. You just keep going through. Yeah. Don't let him get to you. Because toxic relationships is out to destroy you. It, and you're constantly warring with them. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, one of the things that I, another thing that I know that they'll do is they're condescending. Right. You know, in a, in a relationship that is toxic, they're condescending. Right. They, what they do is they're putting you down. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're coming against you. You can't do nothing right. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, everything you do is wrong. The, the, everything, you, everything you say is wrong. You know, they just constantly, uh, constantly coming against you. That's a toxic relationship. Yes. And, and in this season of your life, you don't need that. You that's need right. people who will that's encourage right. you. You need that's people that's going to be speaking to your life and tell you uh, that you can succeed, that you can make a difference, that you can uh, achieve and you can soar high. That's the kind of people you need in your life to compliment you, that's right. to make you, that's uh, to make you uh, feel good about you, not to tear you down, not to come against you. But that's what a toxic relationship will do. It, it will, it's a condescending relationship. It you know, it's constant put down, put down, put down, put down, put down. Yeah. And it will drive you crazy if you let it. Right. <laughs> right. So you can't let it. That, there you got to guard yourself. You got to protect yourself. And you got to make sure that you have a good self-esteem, good self-confidence, and uh, good values in yourself. Because 
it comes to devalue you. The condescending is to devalue you, to make you feel less than, to make you feel like you're inadequate, to make you feel like you can't accomplish, to make you feel like you're a failure. That's what condescending does. It pushes you down. And so, therefore, you have to know God in a way that God builds you up and you know who you are and whose you are and you're strong and you're mighty and you know inside of you is a person who is great and mighty and you're not going to allow anyone to put toxic poison into your life. You refuse to let them have, to have your life. Adela? That's good. That's good. You know, it, unfortunately, that's not discovered before they get together. That's right. Unfortunately, the, the toxic person hides that until they're comfortable and then that's when that monster comes out. <laughs> right, right. They they you, you you get together in a relationship whether it's just platonic friends or whether it's it's man and woman, husband and wife and you're going along dating, doing all that, having the fun, going out to dinner and you know, I really believe when I hear per person say they've changed, really they haven't changed. What they did was they just hid it until such a time they became comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. And then when they get comfortable, then they say, mm -hmm. now I, I've watched all their moves. Now I know what they do and what they Snake don't do. Snake in the grass. I <laughs> don't like the way they sit. I don't like the way they breathe. Uncross your legs. You don't eat right. You don't. And you see a lot of that going on. And then when people get get into a, a place where they decide, I can't live with them anymore. Now you've got other things going on. You don't know whether you should leave. You don't know if they're going to, if it's going to be a dangerous uh, parting, if, if they're going to kill you. You don't know if they're going to fight. You have no idea what's going to happen, but it went so far until now there's fear, there's, there's all kinds of things that are going on in your mind and in their mind. And, and as long as they know they can control you, they've got you. It's hard. See, see they break you down when you don't even know you're being break, broken down. Mm -hmm. Because what's going on inside of you, you're saying, I know me, I know who I am. And that's one of the things you have to remember is stay strong in yourself. But right. again, they so sneaky. I don't care if it's a male, I don't care if it's a female, whoever it is, they're so sneaky that they have already set it up and they know when to jump in and catch you at your worst. Mm. They know when to catch you when you're vulnerable. They know when to catch you when you, you're, you're going through something and, and the next thing you know, you're sec second guessing, oh, maybe I don't look good. Right. Maybe I can't do this and maybe I am dumb. And then you begin to fight back because you, you, you start saying things like he's, he may say, let's use him, for example. He, he may say, you're just dumb. And she's got this bubble thought over here saying, yeah, I am. I was dumb marrying you. <laughs> or she, yeah, or she's the toxic one saying, you're just so lazy. Why don't you go out and get a job or something? And he's got his bubble thought over here saying, well, you know, I didn't have one before we got married. Why do you think I should have one now? So you get all these variables of, of personalities and characters coming out. And it's really sad and dangerous, really, because you don't know what direction it's going to go. Right. But you know that it's not heading in the right direction. So, again, as I said initially, unfortunately, you don't see it before you get in it. Yeah. But, but, if we pray and ask the Lord to show us what's going on, when you begin, the red flags are always coming up. You just ignore them because you just, you just put those blinders on. I'm so in love. They'll change. Yeah. I know they're, it's going to get better. Oh, he hit me, but it was my fault right. because I said this out of line. Before you know it, oh my goodness, you have the worst thing going on. Don't, don't ever, when you see a red flag, the first one that you see, that's when you start dealing with it. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, the communication is very important. Yeah. In a relationship, when it's toxic, believe it or not, you have to develop a type of communication. Mm -hmm. When that person is trying to control you, you have to tell them boldly that, hey, listen, 
I'm an individual, and you have to respect me, and you have to honor me because of who I am. You have to let them know where you stand. Now, you don't want to be threatening because people have a problem when they're threatened. You don't ever want to threaten uh, anyone because when you threaten them, automatically it's going gonna, it's gonna to go sour. Right. You know, if you give a person, I found this out, if you give a person an ultimatum, they're never going to choose it in the best interest of you. <laughs> <laughs> You <laughs> never, take it. never, gonna never. Take they're it. never going to choose in the best interest of you. Yeah. So therefore, the best way is to communicate with them and to make sure that the person understands you. You know, listen. You are watching by way of television. Let me, let me, let me speak to you really, really right now. It's very important that you communicate with that person and know that they communicate with you on what words mean to them. So you have to find out what does what you're discussing with them, what the words mean to them, because it can mean something totally different to them and you, because in the English dictionary, as we all know, you can talk uh, to one another, and next thing you know, both of you confused, because <laughs> words mean so much, uh, so many different things. Different ways, like, for yeah. instance, uh, in the creation of time, the word cleave means to glue. Okay, when, when the word of God says a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave, and they shall be one flesh. Well, that means glue, like super glue, like God did for our marriage. He glued us together with super glue. But today, cleave means to separate. Go get me a cleaver. I'll use the cleaver. So it means to separate today where it changed this whole dynamics of its meaning. So you have to, in communication with people, you have to communicate with them on their educational level. Because if you're trying to uh, communicate with them and you got a Ph.D., yeah, well, all of us know that. You know, uh, you know, you got to come down in terms where they can understand and communicate. You can't, you can't, you know, be talking those words that they don't understand. So you got to know what words mean to them. I remember, I remember when, when uh, you know, I, I grew up in Detroit and, and uh, I was a little bad boy back in the day. And my wife never had that type of uh, issues in the streets and, and uh, you know, anything like that whatsoever. She was goody two-shoe and, and uh, you know, she, uh, you know, one of them, one of them perfect ladies, you know, that carry themselves very well, you know. And so, but I was kind of, you know, rough on the edges when, when we, so I talked a little yeah, bit, you know, a uh, little slang and a little street. I was still, even though I was saved, even though I was saved, I was still talking a little street talk, right? Yeah. So uh, I came in, I came in one day to her and said, hey, honey, look at my shoes. Ain't they bad? She said, what's wrong with them? <laughs> I was like, oh. So, so I used that illustration to get you to see you got to find out what words mean to the person yeah. you're trying to communicate. Because if you don't say this, talk on their language, you'll never be able to reach them where they're at. you got to be able, whatever that individual with a toxic relationship, you got to find words that mean you can't just tell them uh, what you're doing is wrong and you're going to go to hell. They don't want to hear that. Okay, they're not going to listen to that. But you got to say, talk in terms that say something along the lines of, you know, you are dishonoring me. You know what honor means, don't you? Sure, I know what honor means. Well, you dishonor me. Tell me what honor means. Well, honor means where you respect somebody. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You know, you have to talk to them in terms. It's, and it sounds elementary, but yet it's effective because you're talking on their language and the words mean the same thing to you as it do to them. That's good. That's good. Fidella? That's good. You have to also ask questions. Think about it this way. You're culturally different. It doesn't matter whether you're of the black race, the white race, the Spanish race, the whatever race, the Indian race. You're culturally different because if I'm if I was raised in Chicago, my husband's raised in Detroit. We're raised so different. I didn't know him growing up. In order for me to be culturally uh, the same, I would have to live across the street from him and get to know him, and we play and we do whatever. But I was I ra I was uh, born four hours away and never knew each other till we got older. And so the way I was raised is not the way he was raised. That's right. right. 
And so you study one another, you watch one another. Right, I good. find it so so admiring to watch uh, people and study them to yeah. see what they're all about. Now, now to to admire them and to watch them doesn't always be pleasant because it's like mm, I'm confused with some of this. So now you've got to go and, and figure out, maybe go into the into the restroom or the bathroom and say, Lord, how are we going to get through this one? Now, I don't, I don't understand this one. I think one of the things is men leaving the toilet seat up. Why do you have to leave the toilet seat up? That's, <laughs> <laughs> and then you got it down. He want to know why you got the toilet seat down. That is a big issue in the house, yeah. especially if you only have one bathroom. Oh, what about this one, the, who, the, the toothpaste? <laughs> Do you do you do you empty the toothpaste from the top or the bottom? Do, do you, you squeeze it do in you the middle it? and roll it? Or which way does the toilet uh, paper go on the roll? Are you serious? Does it go on the top or does it go? Does it roll from, from the, the out or yeah. does it roll from the bottom? You oh my goodness! You see, when a man put on his his pants, does he put his socks on first or does he put his pants on first? You're like there's so many different things that are out there, and if you don't know how to handle it. Those little petty things yeah. of how uh, the toilet tissue should go on the roll can end up in divorce. Right. And not only that, in the workforce, when people having relationships out there in the workforce, not getting along with their perspective mm. of the way they view things and the way they were raised, because you communicate based on your education, mm -hmm. your culture, how you was raised, right. and what words mean to you. That's the way you communicate right. and your belief. Right. That's culture. Culture is your belief. And so you can automatically get in toxic relationships with people because your belief system is different on, on your job. They believe in doing it this way. And you're the boss and you're trying to tell them to do it that way. And then you're arrogant and cocky and say you either do it my way or the highway and that kind of thing. And so now you got a problem. So the point I'm trying to make is that communication, uh, mutual respect with one another is vitally key. If you got a toxic relationship, you have to build mutual respect with one another so that you all are, are uh, communicating and able to work out your differences. Right. But when you don't have regards for their feelings, and that's one of the biggest problems that we see in toxic relations, no regards for the people's, for the other person's feelings. You know, insensitive. 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 That's a toxic relationship oh, yeah. where you tell them, well, you know, this, you hurt my feelings. So... You know. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Hey, take it or leave it, baby. <laughs> Get over it. Yeah. Those Grow are up. Terms that you, you, know. Hear. you know, these are no regards oh. for no regards for the person's feelings. And you mm. have to have regards for your whoever for mankind, they're yes. feeling what they're going. Yeah. That's called sensitivity, as my That's wife right. alluded to. You have to be sensitive to others. You cannot be dogmatic. You can't be arrogant, self-absorbed. You can't have a relationship where it's either my way or the highway. It's all about me, myself, and I. No, you got to have consideration for others. So one of the best ways to have a healthy relationship is to respect one another, honor one another, listen to one another. Listen to what your uh, person is telling you. If they got an issue with you, sit down and for God's sake, <laughs> let them finish talking. <laughs> yeah. that, that is someone who, who thinks they know it all. They got all the answers for you, for them, for the whole world. They're narcissistic. They, it's all about them. Nothing, nothing works unless they're the one that's in control. Nothing works unless they're leading the pack. Mm. Nothing works unless they have the say-so and they're on the soapbox. Those relationships, again, as I said, unfortunately, we've all been involved, whether it's platonic or whether it's, it's a marriage, we've all been involved with somebody or know someone who has been in, been in that type of a relationship where it literally almost destroy you. I know literally almost don't go together, <laughs> but it literally almost destroy you. Yeah. And, and you're like, how do I get out of this? How do I fix me? And that's what you need to look at. If when you see it that way, don't try to fix the relationship. I, I, I know I'm contradicting right now because what I'm saying is this, that it, if, if it has gotten to a place where it's so volatile that you know someone's going to get hurt, yeah. don't oh. 
try to fix it. Yeah. If fix there, you. Yeah. If, if there's uh, fighting involved and uh, physical abuse, uh, you need help outside of yourself. Trust yes. me. You cannot deal yeah. with that relationship with yourself. You That's need right. help. And sometimes it's the authority. Sometimes you got to get the police involved. And I hate to say that, but that's the fact that you get them involved. Generally, if the police get involved in a domestic uh, violence case, it gets better. Generally, because uh, most of the time it gets it gets better. Uh, but a third a third party has to step in from 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 outside. But here's the deal: what I found in in in, in disrespect and everything, when a person disrespect you in front of others. That's a toxic relationship when they don't have any respect for you in front of others. I mean, they talk to you like a dog in front of others, you know, and embarrass you. That's a toxic relationship if I ever seen one. That's controlling. Yes. Condescending. Yes. Everything that it ought not to be. Exactly. Exactly. And you have to work through those relationships. You have to work through, you know, I'm not saying that God can't step in and turn it around. I'm not saying that, that it's not going to work, but I'm saying you have to become proactive and take authority and begin to make some decisions in how to turn that around. It's not, 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 it's not, not going to fix itself. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's just not. You know. <laughs> it's not going to fix itself. You know, so often we think things have fixed themselves. If we just ignore them, mm. if we just turn a, yeah. a, 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 our, our head and not look at it, then it'll fix itself. No. Okay. As soon as you turn this way and turn back, it's still there. Yeah. So you have to take action. And so in toxic relationships that you have and, and we run into, you know, one of the things you want to do is be at peace with all men. You don't want things to be where they get out of hand, there's physical abuse, and the next thing you know, you all are fighting. Next thing you know, you guys are, 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 are at each other's throat. Uh, and that can be um, husband, wife, that can be uh, son, a daughter, that can be uh, co-workers, the co-workers. It, I'm talking about relationships, not just marriage, uh, but any relationship with your boss or anyone, you got to build healthy relationships. You do. Very, very you important. Do. You it's do. very important. That's good. That's good. Rodella? You know, it, it, it's so sad that the training always comes after the fact. Right. We we don't go see the psychiatrist, the social worker, the 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 help until after we get hurt. Right. We we never That's go so seek counseling because when we're in the relationship, we don't think we need it. Right. When it begins, we don't think we need it. When things, when we first get into a friendship, we don't think we need it. We see it going on, but we never think we need it until it's so bad that you're ready to walk away from everything. That is good. We're going to pick up from yeah. here next okay. week. But listen, it's been an exciting show. I want you to, if you, we are being a blessing to you, if this ministry is being a blessing, we have a sponsor. It's called Good Life. Go to our website, and any donation that you send in, we're going to send you absolutely free a $200 VIP Whoa. club card. Wow. Exclusive hotels and savings worldwide. That's absolutely good. free to you. Wow. So any donation, so go to our website. It's fwccharlotte.com. Make a gift. And any any amount of gift, we're going to send you absolutely free two hundred dollar um, club That's card. Wonderful. One of our sponsors. We're so grateful. That's yes. Good. So listen, this has been a fantastic show. I got to give you the prayer line uh, number right now. We only got about one minute left, so my lovely wife is going to give you the prayer line number to call in Monday through Friday Eastern time and join in with prayer. Give it to them quickly. Okay, for the early risers, it is two one eight. 936-0812, code is 2254-POUND. Give it to him one more time. 218-936-0812, code is 
pound. Two, two, five, four pound. Yes. Well, this has been great. It's yes, been fantastic. Yes. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. This is my awesome wife, Adela Hall Walker. And we are so excited and united. And we wish God's very best. What yes, a joy it yes, is to come yes. to you by way of television. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker, and I'm excited tonight because I have on the set. <laughs> I can't resist it. My darling, darling <laughs> baby. My sweet and sexy lady. Give it up for Bradella Hall Walker. Oh, listen, this is wonderful. Thank you, studio audience, for joining us tonight. We're so delighted that you're with us. And you who are watching by way of television, don't touch that dial. We have a wonderful show prepared for you. Last week, we talked about the wonderful time we had in our anniversary celebration. And I, wrote you, I read the letter where I had written God over 20, oh, excuse me, over 32 30. years ago. Yes. Y'all remember that? I remember. Are y'all Where's the studio audience? Where y'all at? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes, this is so exciting to have you here. And it's a joy to come to you and share with you our journey to greatness. So we got some powerful truths for you, and we're so excited. Give it up for our studio audience tonight. Wow, you guys are so alive. Hey. Wonderful. This is great. So tonight, as we share with you our journey to greatness, we've been married over 32 years. We celebrated in that wonderful city. I could not believe it. It's called Charleston. Yes. Now, yes, Charleston. Give it up for Charleston. Woohoo Woo for Charleston. Listen, listen, I was shocked. I was amazed at Charleston because as far as I knew, the South Carolina was laid back south and slow and not much happening. But to my amazement, I mean, they got it going on. And the crab legs there, oh, my <laughs> goodness, they're that long. <laughs> we had a wonderful yes, anniversary yes, celebration. Yes, I want to thank our home church for sponsoring us. They were so gracious to help us to go there and have a wonderful time. And me and my wonderful wife, we spent a wonderful uh, time together yes. as we celebrate our anniversary. We had an awesome, extraordinary time. And so we're going to share with you today the power of prayer. This is going to be part four of the power of prayer. Prayer moves the hand in the heart of God. No doubt about it. Listen to me. If you don't get anything else out of this broadcast, get this. You there watching by way of television that there's power in prayer. And prayer moves the hand in the heart of God. And we have a prayer line. And I want you to, before, before this program's over, I'm going to give you a number. And I want you to call the prayer line from 6 to 6.30. Oh, you are going to be in for a treat. Our awesome, wonderful First Lady, Bradella Hall Walker, does a phenomenal job. I mean, she prays for everything and everybody. <laughs> I mean, she don't miss a beat. I'm telling you what. So if you need prayer or just want to join us, we're going to have a number on the bottom of the screen. screen and I'm also, she's going to give it to you in just a moment. But we want you to call in Monday through Friday. 
Monday through Friday from 6 to 6.30. You can count on it. We're bombarding heaven on your behalf. We're bombarding heaven on our church behalf and for marriages, couples, single folk. We just pray for everybody. Amen. Amen. We yes, just we pray do. for everybody because we want yes, God's we very best for you. Yeah. We pray for our young people. And so we just have an awesome time in prayer. So we know that prayer changes things. And so uh, I want to share with you a couple of secrets about prayer. One of the things is you have to pray with certainty. Yes. You have to pray believing. You can't doubt because if you doubt, you out. You got to pray with determination. You got to pray steadfast. You got to pray believing God and raise your expectation. See, so often we, we might even pray, pray for something and say, well, God, you know, I hope you do it for me. You might do it. Maybe you'll do it. I wish you'd do it. And if you don't do it, it's all right. No, 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 no. That's not the way you pray. Pray with a level of expectancy. Raise your level. Raise the bar. Raise and know that you serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, right. abundantly, that's above right. all that you can ask that's or right. think according to he his power that's ready and willing and able to work for you. You got to believe that. Yes. And so when you go to God, you got to go with confidence. Yes, the word of God says this is the confidence that we have. If we ask anything, anything. according to his will, he hears us. And we got to be confident in that. We got to be fully persuaded in that. I mean, we got to know that we know that we know that we know that God is for us. And if God be for us, everybody, everybody else, else might as, might as, well, as be. well be. Come on, let's give. Yeah. That's good. You got to know that God is for you. You got to know that he has your best interests at heart. You got to know that God is on your side. So when you pray, lift your expectation. Raise your level of expectation and believe God. And then once you pray and ask him, begin to thank him for it. That's right. And begin to say you already have it. Claim it and say it's yours. Your prosperity, your blessings, whatever you believe in God for, it could be a loved one that's on drugs, on crack cocaine, begin to see them delivered. After you pray, then start seeing it. You got to become a visionary. That's right. You got to have a vision for what's possible. You know, and a visionary is one who sees what it should be, what it could be, what it ought to be, and what it's going to be. That's a visionary. And you want to immediately, when you pray, become a visionary. That's right. You want to get to the place That's where you right. visualize not the way it is, but the way it's going to be. That's right. And as you walk that thing out and talk that thing out, you will see God move on your behalf. There's no doubt in my mind, if you do that, God will hear your cry. That's great. That's great. Well, listen, I'll talk all night. I'm telling you what, I'm excited, ignited, enthused, and infused because I'm anointed and appointed. But I'm going to share, uh, turn this right on over to my lovely du du duck. Okay. <laughs> I keep forgetting I'm on Christian television. My goodness. We come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. That's how we come this far by faith. Yes. Leaning on the Lord, yes. But she's still my darling, darling baby. <laughs> My sweet and sexy lady. Give it up for First Lady Vanilla Hall Walker. Wow. Oh. <laughs> this is so great. What I love about prayer is that knowing that it's communication. Yeah. It's being able to talk to God. A lot of people are afraid to talk to him because they see him as this huge, awesome, fearsome person, spirit that they can't see sitting way high and looking down and ready to zap them. But yeah. he is such a loving God. He cares so much for us. And one of the, the uh, most awesome aspects of prayer to me is knowing that he told us that we can call upon his name and he will hear us. That's right. And he will show us great and mighty things that we don't know anything about. And the confidence that we have that he said is that when we do pray, we can believe that everything that we ask for it can come to pass. But you have to believe. You have to believe. A lot of times we, we believe for the moment. And then if it, if it doesn't happen when we think it should happen, then it's like, God, you didn't, you didn't do it. You just didn't do it. But he's a God who cannot lie. He's a God who arm is not, too, is not slack or, or short. 
That's he right. can do anything that he has said that he would do. We just have to believe. We have to walk by faith, knowing that he's given us his faith. He even said that, that we could, this is what I think is so awesome. He said that we could speak to a mountain. Anybody can visualize a mountain. And, and I think it was more of a metaphor because he said if we, if we speak to a mountain, I believe it's a mountain of doubt or if it's, it's a mountain of fear. It could be anything that's gotten in your way. And, and he said you could speak to that thing and it will be cast into the sea. It will be as far from you as, as, as it, it could, it, well, he said it'd be cast into the sea, so then it's gone. So let me just say it that way. Uh, prayer to me is so powerful because it helps me to understand that I am in a relationship with God. And it's, it's just, um, it's so great that you can pray for others. You can stand in the gap for them. What they're going through, you can pray for them. And I hear people say, I know someone was praying for me because I heard them. I could hear the prayer. Yes. I could feel something is going on great in my life. And I, I'm just really blessed that the honor was given to me that I could actually take this time every morning from Monday through Friday, 6 o'clock to 6.30, and we just bombard heaven. I believe that heaven touches earth and earth touch heaven. <laughs> yes. And then as I, I heaven and it. earth are touching, I believe that earth is yielding, is increased to us, and we have an opportunity to see the manifestation of the works of God. That's wonderful. That, that is wonderful. And you, you, yes. And you know, the scripture says you can have whatsoever you say it, yes. what thou sayest. And I'm reminded of a man named Joshua, a mere man, just like me. Mm -hmm. The story is that Joshua was going to battle, him and his, and, the, and his host of army was going to battle, and it was getting dark, and they needed some more time mm -hmm. to whoop the enemy. They needed some more time because it was getting dark, and they had fear that if it gets dark, the enemy will retreat and go back and get stronger and come back and defeat them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So all they needed was some more sunlight. They said, we can whoop them. All we need is some more time. And a mere man, just like you and I, a man that when he was hungry, he ate. When he was tired, he rested. When he was hungry, he ate. And just like uh, put on his pants, just, just an ordinary man, just like me, spoke to the moon and to the stars <laughs> and commanded to stand still and it obeyed him That's wonderful. there's power in prayer it is. but you have to have compassion you have to have a spirit of commitment and dedication to the Lord Jesus Christ and for the cause and the purpose in which you're out to make right. and because he was sincere living life on purpose he lived life intentional and he had a relationship with God That's good. and I want to encourage you to make sure you have a relationship with God so you can command the morning so you can begin to speak those things that be not as though they were so you can shift and change things by the mere speaking out of your mouth and declaring and knowing that it's going to be done in Jesus name now you know what I'm reminded now I hate to tell this story because you know confession is good for your you know good for the uh, 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 confession is good for the soul but it's really bad for your reputation, really. <laughs> and, and I'm going to share this. And I, I, I really don't like sharing this, but I have to share it because mm. the Lord just told me to share it with you. Some of you might know, I traveled as a full-time evangelist, and I had a nine-member team that traveled with me in my early part of ministry. I was young, excited, and uh, really thrilled and everything, Erica. It was really, really wonderful. And, and this was an awesome time in my ministry. So... Uh, a church had invited us to come and do an outdoor rally and uh, and preach outside. And I love to do outdoor open air. I love to preach anyway. So uh, so here we are. We're in Florida. And um, they're setting up, the band setting up everything. And uh, we're getting ready to get started with the crusade. And it's getting ready to rain. And I said to myself, my goodness, we're going to be rained out. You know, just like the baseball game or something, get rained out. We have to get the people a rain check. <laughs> and, and so my wife said, well, no problem. And in front of all of these people, she stood there and spoke up to the clouds and commanded those clouds to shift. I was the most embarrassed preacher in the world. I said to myself, 
They gonna think my wife's a lunatic. <laughs> they gonna think she crazy. They gonna think. And I was so embarrassed. And I was like, man, come on, baby, don't do that. Don't be out here. You know, come on, don't let nobody see you. Don't let nobody see you. And to my amazement, in front of all of these people as a witness, the cloud just began to turn and go in another direction. That's right. That's right. Now, I know you skeptics that are watching right now, you say, well, that was just a coincidence. I, I thought the same thing. But it kept on happening. I mean, she did it on several, several occasions. So I got where I said, honey, come on. It's about to rain. Start speaking, start speaking to the clouds and demanding to declare it. I, I, I became a believer because I seen the hand of God. A mere woman, just like you and I, but understood the power of prayer in declaring and decree. Rodella? Well, I, I just felt and thought that what I was doing was normal. I thought that everybody could could speak to a cloud. I thought that everybody could just, because if you believe in God and you read his word and what he said you could do, you could do. Now, either I was I was uh, foolish enough to believe it or I was had enough faith to believe it. So I guess I had enough faith to believe that he said that I could speak. I remember at 12 years old, I, I, it was Christmas Day. I might have shared this, but it was Christmas Day, and it, didn't, it hadn't snowed. I'm living in Chicago. Well, we're used to snow on Christmas Day, and so around close to noon, I'm looking out of the bedroom window, and I'm just talking to God. I'm like, we don't have any snow. Can you just let it snow just for 15 minutes? That's where I'm talking to him. Uh, can you let it start at noon and let it stop at 12.15? Now, I, again, I'm 12, and because I had already read the Bible through and I enjoyed the history and, and the, the, um, what was taking place, I believed, and I went on back in the other room with everyone else, and next thing I know, I heard someone saying, it's snowing. And I ran back to the window, and I looked out the window, and I'm, it was really coming down, and I'm just grinning. And it was a secret that I had between me and God. I wouldn't tell anybody that I did that. I, was, <laughs> I mean, at my age, I thought so, and I'm like, ooh, look at God. God is so great. I just love this. So it was never for me to begin to speak to God in that manner, knowing how powerful he was, that he could do things like that. And even when he was telling the story about us about me standing there telling the the rain to stop and the cloud to move on over just keep going I even said this I said when the people come in they're gonna say that it it has rained everywhere else but here and sure enough when the people started coming in they said it didn't rain here it rained everywhere else but here <laughs> and there I am off to the side grinning again my little secret so, so um, my husband began to watch the things that I was doing as far as just speaking into the elements and speaking into what God had, was doing. And so that we had some friends with us one day. We were out. It was near, near Easter, and we, had, uh, we were selling the crosses. And so the sun was so hot. No, it was getting ready to rain, as a matter of fact. Again, here we go. They hadn't experienced this, so here she goes again. She stands there in front of Kmart. And I said, uh, looked at the clouds, and I was looking at the direction they were going. And I said, now you just keep going that way. I commanded the clouds, you go that way so that we can have some sunlight. So Christina said, now, now make sure that it doesn't get too hot. Just, we just want some, some, some sun. So I said, and let it get so hot we can't bear it. <laughs> so what did I do that for? <laughs> It worked, but it was so hot, it was unbearable. <laughs> so again, there's God moving. And I have seen one thing after another, <laughs> and, and it, it's like not playing with God in, in that sense, but just understanding that he moves that quickly, understanding that all you have to do is ask him and he'll do it. We make it so difficult. We yeah, think that, that when we pray, we've got to always kneel down and close our eyes no you don't have to he is too close for you to do that you don't have to do that and paul talks yeah. about praying without ceasing right you can pray anytime anywhere on my job i pray on my job soon as i sit down i start i pray and bless my job when i'm on the road wherever i am sometimes something may happen and i just begin to pray 
You don't have to always open up your mouth. It's in your spirit. The communication that you have with God, because the spirit of God is already inside of you. So you're already communicating with him. You need to understand how close he really is to you. And, and, and a joy that he has of knowing that he really wants to commune with you. He really wants to have that relationship with you. And if we get to that place of understanding how close we are to God, prayer becomes nothing. Yes. It's just a part. It, to me, it becomes life. Yes. It be, when I say it becomes nothing, I, what I mean is it becomes so easy that it be, it's second nature to you. Yes. Just like getting in a car after you've driven for years, you don't even think about where the gas pedal is, That's where right. the brakes are, where the steering wheel. You just get in and start moving. That's how prayer is. That's prayer right. is just second nature. You know what you're doing, and it's awesome. But I want to share this one thing before I turn it back over to my husband. You have to remember this. God is a holy God. And when we come to him, we have to come to him with humility. Mm. We have to come to him with a, 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 a pure heart. You can't go to God any kind of way. You, can't, you cannot just talk this there has to be that reverence of his holiness and that's one of the things that i've learned that if i'm if i'm having a have an angry spirit or i'm angry about something in my anger i come to god humble and i tell him i'm angry i tell him god this just messed me up today but i need you to fix it for me but before you fix them fix me that's good make me right because it may not be them. It may be me. I may have missed it. I may have, have set this whole thing off. So when you begin to turn it on you and just say, God, do what you need to do for me to make me right before you, then when he does that and he calms your spirit and it's like a fresh wave has come upon you, then you begin to, to uh, move again with God. And, and he just, he just answered prayers. He just answered what's going on in your life. Wow, yeah, that is does. so good. Yeah. You know, that is so powerful because people don't realize that other people reveal the real them. Right. They don't see that. They look at the fact that they made them upset. They made them mad. You made me do it. <laughs> I wouldn't hit you if you hadn't made me mad. Nope. <laughs> but the Ooh. fact is people reveal the real you. Yes. God uses people to reveal you so you can see who you are so that you can shift and change from where you are to where he wants you to be. God uses people so that people can mirror you and you can actually look and see where you're at spiritually, right. mentally, and right. physically, and emotionally right. in dealing with people. And it will help you to grow and develop how you respond. And that's the key. Never react to situations. But when you have a prayer life, it helps you to respond, right. not it to does. react. Because so does. often we can react to a situation because our emotions get the best of us because we're not disciplined, we're not in tune with the Holy Spirit, we're not in tune with God. So a whole lot of people have messed up their life because they moved on emotions and didn't think things out. But if we would learn to realize that people are put in our lives to reveal the real us, it will help us to develop and become strong. And then we'll recognize that we have co-creative power with God. And we can know that we have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that is, quickens us. And we have that power. And we can speak and declare. And we can decree. And in the morning time, when you wake up in the morning, you can command your morning, what oh, your day yes. is going to be That's like. Right. I am That's going right. to have a prosperous day. Oh, yeah. I am going to have a blessed day. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm an overcomer. I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. You got to make a declaration and you got to declare in the morning what your life is going to be right. like. And then throughout the day, it will empower you your, where you declared. And with the co-creative power that you have with God, it'll help walk you through those tough times, those difficult times, and those struggles and those tests that you'll face. And you'll come out of them, and you'll come out of them on top. That's right. And you know the joy that I find is that uh, God has brought people in our lives to perfect us. Well, listen, we are almost out of time. First Lady, my lovely darling wife, is going to share a few just a moment. Okay. But we got to get ready to bring it to a close. Go ahead, darling. Okay. He has brought people in our lives to perfect us, to make us better. We're not in this world alone, and, and therefore, 
when we understand the perfecting that he's given to us, it helps us to understand people better. That just as God loves you, he loves them. They may be messy, but he still loves them. He's getting ready to work a, a work in their life. If we would bless them, if we would love them, if we would forgive them, because one day we were right there, just as crazy, just as messed up, and just as deep in darkness as they may be right now. So when you understand that you can love them right where they are, God will move you out of the way so that you can be blessed, and they will be blessed as well. Wow, that is awesome. Right. Well, listen, we got to get ready to close, but it's been a real joy coming to you by way of television. Again, I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker, my wonderful co-host, and we have shared with you the power of prayer, and we trust you were touched, moved, and inspired. If this broadcast is being a blessing to you, would you be so kind to go to our website, FWC Charlotte, and click on Give and make a generous gift so we can stay on the air. We're thankful so much for you who are watching us, and we look forward to seeing you next week same time same place so as we gotta go we gotta get ready to go oh yes before we go number. we gotta give you the uh, the get your pen crayon chalk or something <laughs> to write this number down quickly give it to him the number is two one eight nine two one eight six zero eight one two give it to him again that's two one eight two one eight nine three six nine three six zero eight one two zero eight one two and the code is two two five four Pound. Don't forget to hit the pound button. We'll see you in the morning. Give God us a call. We got to go. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker, my darling, darling baby. And we say to you, we love you. And we wish God very best to you. Freedom Worship Center of Charlotte is a community built on faith, fellowship, and the belief that Jesus Christ is the true center of our church. We provide a fun, casual worshiping environment that uses inspiring messages from the Bible and translates those messages to real-world applications. Our community is a group of people from all walks of life who come together to celebrate the Word of Christ, find abundant freedom and peace, experience breakthroughs in every area of life, and discover a whole new level of God's anointing and power. If you're looking for a church that celebrates God in a fun and comforting atmosphere, we invite you to be our guest at Freedom Worship Center of Charlotte. Visit us online for sermon times or call us today for more information. Come grow with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. What a joy it has been coming to you by way of television. This is our anniversary year and we're looking forward to going into the next year with you. However, if the support is not there to continue to keep us on the air, we're gonna to have to say goodbye. Of course, that'll be a sad, bitter day for us. But I wanna encourage you right now to consider supporting the ministry so as we celebrate our anniversary, we can go into a new year with you and continue to come to you by way of television. We trust we've been a blessing to you. And if we've been a blessing to you in any way, I wanna encourage you to get your checkbook out and write a check Make it payable to Freedom Worship Center of Charlotte. Or, you see, I don't write checks. You can go to our website, FWC Charlotte, click, click on Give, and make a generous gift so we can stay on the air. We're counting on your support. We need your support to continue to do what we're doing. So trust we've been a blessing, and if we have, we need your support. Wishing God's very best to you. Again, I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker, and I have enjoyed coming to your living room, place of business, and speaking the word of God to you. So love you, and again, wishing God's very best to you.
Wow. Hey, all right. Wonderful. Awesome. Happy New Year. Wow, yes. Thank you, studio audience. Thank you. Thank you, my producer, Lanao James. We are so appreciative to all of you. And we wish you a happy new year. Yes. This is 2017. Yes. My Lord, my God. And today I have my wonderful co-host with me, my lovely darling baby, sweetheart, <laughs> sugar dumpling, and all of the all of the great things to that, Bradella Hall Walker. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we wish God's very best to you yes. in 2017. This is your year. I believe that with all my heart. This is going to be an extraordinary, amazing, fantastic time for your life. I believe that. And I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker, my lovely wife, Bradella Hall Walker. And what a joy it is to come to you by way of television in this new year. A new year. We survived 2016. It was an awesome year. year. But yeah. this will be the greatest year for the church, for the life, for the marriages. This will be huge and extraordinary for you. Yes. I'm telling you what, great things are happening in the spirit realm for the church. And I know sometimes it looks dim with marriages falling apart. More people today are getting a divorce than getting married today. But we're going to turn that around because we're going to continue to fight for marriages. And we're going to fight for your marriage today. Because yes. you are, that are watching by way of television, so many of you, you're in trouble with your marriage. We understand that. We understand the struggles and the difficulties. We've been married over 30 years, and it has been a journey to greatness. And we want to rewind there and share with you some real insight to help empower your marriage. So your marriage can have workability. Because 2017, I believe, is going to be the greatest year for couples. I believe that with all my heart. Yeah. Couples, listen, and those that are just getting ready to get married, you are entering a great time of marriage. You that have just gotten married, you that are planning on getting married this year, the timing is right. Yes, when he proposed to you, uh, the timing was right, and you guys will have an awesome, extraordinary marriage. But I want to encourage you to tune in to Journey Greatness broadcast so we can continue to give you some tips and encouragement on marriage because, yes. you know, one of the greatest things about marriage that I love and that is interacting with other couples, fellowshipping, and getting counsel. Because mm -hmm. so often we think we know it all and we want to do it my way or we want to do it our way. And so often we can learn from others. You know, the Word of God says iron sharpens iron. And we should learn from people's mistakes. So often we never learn from the couple who fail. And so we can also learn from the couple who fail and we can learn from the couple who succeeded. So today we're coming to you as a marriage that has succeeded the test of time. We've stood the hard times, the difficult times. You know, and you, you say, well, I never said I want to leave my wife. Yeah, sure, right. You never said I want a divorce. Yeah, right. You never said this is the worst marriage. Yeah, right. You never said I wish I could get out of this. You're, yeah, sure, yeah, sure you have. It. But I want you to know that that's what the enemy does. If you've said that, you're in the right time to listen to this program because in this new year this is the beginning of a new year and this is going to be extraordinary it's going to be an amazing year so we're going to help you to empower your life so your marriage can have workability isn't that right Bradella Hall Walker right. amen right. so I'm going to give her a chance to share with you her heart as we take you to a journey to greatness but know this 2017 is your year of success in your marriage your marriage will survive. You will succeed. It may have been rocky in 2016, but I got good news for you. God's going to move into your marriage in 2017. Okay. I believe that. That's great. That's great. Bradella? As we go into the, the year 2017, I'm sure some of you wondered if you would even get over. Some of you thought <laughs> that this is, is not going to happen. But I want to say to you, keep pushing forward. Amen. Keep, That's great. Keep moving forward. Yes. Because marriage, it, it, sure, there's some, some rocky marriages. There's some volatile marriages. There's marriages that are just destined not to make it. Again, those are the things that we've talked about before where people didn't plan or they weren't compatible or they got married for the wrong reasons. 
they got married because someone told them they should or there was a pregnancy or something else might have gone wrong or you got married for material purposes. But those of you who married sincerely and said this is my love for the rest of my life, even though things have gone a little crazy, you can still say you made it over into 2017 yes. and I'll take one day at a time. Right. And, and patch up. Don't put a Band-Aid over it. That's but good. But cause healing to come mm. to every area of your marriage that has been broken down, that wow. has been yeah. hurt, things that have gone wrong. Mm. If there's been unfaithfulness in the marriage, forgive. If you're yeah. willing to make that marriage work, forgive and keep moving forward. I was talking to a young lady, honey, and she was sharing with me very emotionally how uh, She's been married a, um, a long time, a long time. And About her, how long? Oh, I would say in, in her teens, 16, okay. 17 years. Wow. And somehow the husband uh, got caught up mm. in something and uh, a baby oh. uh, came out of it. Well, what is the first thing that the wife would normally do? Divorce, leave, she's not going to have this. And, but she decided, I have worked too hard this marriage. I invested wow. too much in it. That's an awesome woman. And she said, I'm going to stay with you mm. as long as we know that this is, it's over. If we have to take the baby, we'll take care of the baby. No. Whatever wow. we need to do, I will be there That's for incredible. you. When you want to talk about my hat, I saluted them. Let's I've just take just a moment. Anything like that. Let's before. just take a moment and applaud this awesome, extraordinary mm -hmm. young lady that will say, I'm going to fight for my marriage. Come on. Yes. She, it's, it was just so awesome just to hear her heart as the tears were flowing. She says, I've waited for you. She had been married before, mm. and their, the marriage didn't work. He had been married before. His marriage didn't work. But they knew each other from a long time, and somehow God brought wow. them back together. And even in the midst of that, the trials that came still kept them together because she knew. She knew that this is what God had planned. And if we understand that, if we can see people walk through that type of a marriage where they've been married before uh, and, and still stick it out, it's great because the marriage is an investment. You know, and that's great because what can happen is you can divorce and get out of that relationship. Mm -hmm get into another one and start all over where you think the grass is greener on the other side mm -hmm. and all hell can break loose. That's right. And next thing you know, you want to go back to the old one. Mm -hmm. But you say, my God, I never expected mm -hmm. this to be as bad. Right. I just came out of a relationship and went through this, and now look at it. This is even worse than that. Because you took everything from the first marriage with you. Mm. You can't... I, I don't... I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't... That that. You divorce and you should stay single. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if you feel that divorce is the answer, then don't just divorce the person. Divorce everything about it. Not the children, but divorce everything that caused the, the problem. Yeah, that's good. So that you can then, when you are ready and healed, and usually people are not healed, they're usually broken, and when you are healed to go into the second marriage, then when you go into it, you go into it new. You go into it fresh. Right. You don't have to carry that pain. And that's great. But here's the problem that I see with that, is that when most individuals break up, and for some reason the person who may be the innocent party always feel guilty as if they caused it. Well, they... they I believe that because you're, you're wondering what could I have done right. to make it better or I could have been a better spouse. I, maybe I did this, maybe I did this wrong. And one of the saddest things is when they say, I wasn't paying attention mm. to, the, to the downfall of my marriage. Wow. Well, listen, let's stop right there. Take a check up from the neck up. Mm -hmm. And right now, examine where your marriage is. Because mm -hmm. it would be sad if you got divorce papers and you go, what is this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you act all surprised when the sheriff department comes and you say, oh, wait a minute, this must be the wrong address. Mm -hmm. This is, must be the wrong person. This is not for me. Mm -hmm. 
because you didn't see the science. Right. That is so awesome. Yes. I want to encourage you that's watching by way of television. Right now, take an examination of your marriage. Get a checklist and see, is your wife happy? Is your husband happy? Are they coming home on time? Um, are they spending time away from the house? Do they dread the coming home? Or they come through the door, can't wait. Oh, I'm home. Darling, I'm home. <laughs> or, honey, I'm home. Oh, with excitement. Or do they come through like, oh, God. Got to come home to Mrs. Grouch. What made her a grouch, though? I don't know. Yeah. See, that's where you got to take a look at. I mean, did you play a part in that? Could have. Yeah. But sometimes yeah. it's just the person for how they were raised. Because their dad and their mom may have been Groucho March. Or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they, may, oh, wow. <laughs> they may have been mean to each other. And they grew up in that. And that spirit jumped off onto them. And they thought that was the way that they were supposed to act. So what, and, so what happened then? Question to you, if, if that's the way they're going to go and that's what they're going to bring into their marriage, then what happened to the planning? What happened mm, to the, that's good. the date them for a whole year, get to meet their family, get to meet? There should have been those signs there then. There you go. To the man that if he's seeing that wife or seeing the future mother-in-law being a grouch, then he knows that pattern may just come into your family as well. So those are things you have to look at. You, you know what? And that's great because, mm -hmm. I, you know, I would be bold enough if, if I saw some signs maybe with one of the sisters that, that seemed like she was a slouch or something, and I'm not calling anybody a slouch. But if I noticed there was a slouch in the family, I'd say, you're not going to be like her, are you? you know? <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, you have to look at all of it. You don't, you don't know a lot of times what, what is, is, once you get into the mirror, what contributed that issue unless you you really went into the mirror checking out the 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 future in laws or even looking at your own home say say I came from a home where it was very abusive and my whole way of going into marriage is just to escape that mm. and I go into marriage and now that same spirit of abuse that was on my family is now on me, and I'm abusing you. Right, wow. And it's only because we don't break those ties. We don't realize that, for me, I'm a new individual. For me, I am not or should not have the same identity. Even though the DNA is there, I don't have to have that same identity because now there's this person coming into my life where I want to value them. I want to say this is going to be my soulmate for life. I want to say that I want to love them for life. I want that tenderness and that gentleness. So you have to examine you. You have to look at you and say, what do I really want in this marriage? Are you really planning? So you plan together, but you plan separately. You, you plan internally. What am I really looking for? That's good. And I think what happens so often, we go in with preconceived ideals mm -hmm. with an expectancy, and we don't share our expectations to the other person. Right. So once we get married, we have this fantasy of what it looks like and what we're dreaming and what we view it to be. Mm -hmm. And then when it don't show up like that, we're disappointed and we want out. So that's where the planning is very important to share with your uh, soon to be wife or husband, what your expe expectations are, so that they can tell you, well, listen, I want to let you know up front, it won't be like that. Then you'll know, well, you can make a well informed decision mm -hmm. as to whether you want to continue or not. Because if you don't ask the right question, see, so often we think it's having the all, all the right answers. That's not the case, it's asking the right questions. If you can ask your spouse the right questions, you'll be amazed. Or you can ask your future potential husband or future potential wife or whatever the case may be, or significant other, or whatever the case may be, you ask them the right questions, then you know what to expect. 
Because when you start assuming that it's going to be a certain way, especially if you had a previous marriage, and you said it's, it's never going to be that way, and then you don't see that in the person that you're looking at, and then as soon as you get married, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, my <laughs> God, and then you go, oh, you didn't see it coming. <laughs> so therefore, it's very important that you ask the right question. Ask them, hey, you know, um, is there any mental illness in your family? You know, if they get offended like that and go crazy, you know the mental illness is them. <laughs> uh, I was, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, you you got, in other words, you got that's to, true. you got that's to a be. a little bold, though. Well, I mean, I'm not saying to say it like that. I'm not saying, of course not. But, but. The whole thing is you got to watch people's response exactly. to your questions. Right. Here's That's another, the key. Yeah, here's another question. If the, if the woman is wanting children and the husband isn't, that has to be discussed. Oh, absolutely. Or the, or the, or the woman is not wanting children because she's so career and the, the That's husband good. is wanting children. Yeah. And, and you find out that this is going on before you get married. The, the, the worst thing, the worst mistake that you, as the person who want children, would have, or the worst mistake is saying, oh, they'll change their mind later. Oh, on. my God. Yeah. No, if they didn't want it before they got married. No guarantee. I don't believe they're going to have children after they get married. That's There's right. nothing to make you believe that they're going to take, take on that responsibility being a parent. You know, that is so mm -hmm. awesome. You that are watching by way of television, really get a hold of this. Mm -hmm. Because marriages have been destroyed right. because they went into the marriage with expectation, mm -hmm. assuming things, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, the gentleman is maybe an alcoholic that you're dating or the, or the woman that you're dating pops pills and uh, prescription drugs. But you say once she married me, she'll be a changed woman. Mm -hmm. And... and and it gets worse. Mm -hmm. Then you're frustrated. Then you're upset. Then you're mad. And then you don't handle your feelings very well. You get so angry that you throw something. And something can go wrong. Right. Something can go wrong. So, therefore, it's best to take a checkup and just make sure and ask the right questions. Get a checklist and ask the right questions so you can get the right answers. And what we're doing is we're not coming against marriage oh, at no. all. We just want marriage to be right. Absolutely. There's so many messed up marriages. It doesn't matter whether you're a believer or whether you're not a believer. You went into it saying that we're getting married. It's a holy, holy sacrament. It's a, 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 a holy ceremony. And then things go wrong. It isn't that we don't want you to get married. Is that we want you to marry right. That's right. Because, again, marriage is, is so sacred. Marriage is something that God planned. And, therefore, in his planning, he wants you to plan it as well. And God's not going to have a problem if you decide after, after realizing that now I've said I'm going to get married and then at the very last moment... When you think you're getting ready to walk down that aisle, you spent $3,000 on oh. that dress. They're getting ready to play. Here comes the bride. <laughs> They've already made the movie Runaway Bride. I'd rather you be a runaway bride or, now. Or groom. Or groom, or runaway groom, groom, then for you to get in that marriage, and then three months later, you're still running away or running to the divorce court or something else has gone home you ran back home or you ran this way or you ran that way i would rather see you say no i'm not ready for this wow than to see you get into it because you said well it's going to work out i know it is and you know it'll get better in your gut feeling it's right. not going to work but we do that we we find reasons mm -hmm. to make it happen but not make the marriage work wow i spent too much money we sent out invitations. All these people are expecting us to get married. This is this is supposed to happen. And so How about this I'm gonna one? go ahead and I'm gonna get married anyway. And all in the back of your mind you know this is not going to work. 
How about this one? If it goes sour, God will fix it. <laughs> or, or if it goes sour, it just went sour. Whoop-de-doo. Wrong attitude. Because then you've messed up not only their life, their family, and there's more at state at, at this than what maybe meets the eye. Exactly. So the point we're trying to make, you that are watching by way of television, we're saying count the cost. Count the cost. Count the cost. What is it going to cost you? And sometimes things are not worth the price. Some things cost more than you can afford. That's right. Some things are just too costly That's right. that you don't want to spend the money for it or the time or the pain or the hurt. It's not yeah. worth it. That's right. It's not worth the agony and the pain. That's so right. why not examine today where you're at? You that are planning on getting married, why not examine and just, just kind of just take a look at it and examine. Now, we're not saying, you know, that it's the great thing to do to cancel the marriage. Of course not. But we're saying that make sure that you dot every I and cross every T. And, and that's, that's good because we, that's why we're here. We're here. We're not going to sugarcoat it. We're not going to tell you that it's going to be blissful. We're not going to tell you that you're going to be on cloud nine forever <laughs> in a day. We're not going to tell you that you're going to celebrate every single day. You celebrate life every single day. You should celebrate your marriage every single day. However, it goes, something happens and it goes wrong. And, and, and I think one of the other saddest parts is when the two get in and then the unexpected happen and one of them can't bounce back. Right. And there, somebody snap. And then you have the, the, the violence and you have all these other things going wrong. There's so many things that can happen. All we're saying is that do it the right way. If you have second thoughts about it, then that's a good sign to wait. That's right. That's good. Mm -hmm. that, that's really good. Yes. That's really good. If you're having doubts now, mm -hmm. just hold on. Yes. But again, we're encouraging marriage. We're not discouraging marriage. We want you to have a healthy marriage. We want you to go into marriage with an excitement right. and, and put some protection on your marriage, mm -hmm. such as have a day where you all sit down and talk about life. It, a time that's called family time. That's very important. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a family time where the person that, that you're connected with know that I can meet with them on this particular day and we can be transparent. We can take the mask off. We can be transparent and share our innermost feelings, some of our concerns. And I'm not saying that that's the time to badger them, or that's the time I can't wait to get them. I'm not saying that. I, I am saying that that's a time for you all to be fully expressed, fully engaged with one another, to share where you're at, and it's a time that both of you can interact with each other and connect and know where each other is at. So you're not guessing. You know, so often one of the worst things you can do in a marriage that we've learned is you can't be guessing where your spouse is or or guessing what they're up to or guessing you know playing this guessing game you must know you have to know where they're at and if they're going through a difficult time going through some struggles you need to know that you need to know just how they feel and they need to be able to trust you to share their most inner feelings and their their disappointments in life they need a time that they can talk with you and men, we're probably the worst. I, I know I was. Maybe you were much better than me. But, but I know I was the worst. Is I didn't want to hear anything they had to say in, in the early part of marriage. I ain't had time for that. I got too busy. I got things to do, people to see, places to go, business to handle. Okay? Well, I, I, I learned that. I, I learned that to have a listening ear to my wife. I've learned that. I've, I have really adopted that. And now when I, I have... Uh, listening, she's sharing something with me that's a concern. I listen to her and I say, tell me more, darling. <laughs> and she goes, wow. She smiles because she knows I'm listening. Yes. You know, that's one of the biggest mistakes we men tend to do is not listen. 
I mean, we we think we're listening while we're playing the video game. <laughs> we we think we're listening while we're the football game. Yeah, we think we're listening while we're watching TV. We think we we're listening while we're brushing our teeth. But listening is your undivided attention. And you know what? Another thing is she's talking even when she's not talking. Mm, that's that's when powerful. You really should be listening. If she's saying, if she's there and she's trying to get your attention and you're not giving it to her, she's still talking. She's trying to tell you something. There are times that there's going to be a hint here, a hint there. She's going to say, oh, you're just taking me for granted. Oh, I'm not taking you for granted. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And she'll go, mm-hmm. And you know, that's a good point <laughs> because, because as I counsel with men, that's one of the biggest problems with women. Yes. They don't like that women hint. They don't like that, that they don't are not straightforward because men, we're built and we're wired to be straightforward. We're just going to shoot, shoot straight. Where women are, are designed and made different. They're wired different. Where they have a tendency to suggest. They have a tendency to uh, share a kind of beat around the bush a little bit and, and drop these little hints and then when you don't get it they get mad and men have a real struggle with that but if you're in tune with your wife and you're trying to catch the hint and you don't catch the hint just ask the question darling what are you trying to say and then she then is forced to no longer hint, hint no longer beat around the bush no longer be vague towards it but she has to tell you at that moment, then you'll know. And, and again, backing it up a little bit, before she got to the hint stage, she was talking. She had to finally get to the hint stage because you weren't listening. So when she says, I've been saying the same thing over and over and over again, and ladies, you understand what I'm saying. You've been saying the same thing over and over again, and you're getting the same results. Now you say, I'm just going to hint, and then hopefully he'll get it. But, but try to make sure that, that it doesn't get to that point. We shouldn't be at a place of hinting. Right. There shouldn't be a hint stage. But here is, here is the difference, the distinction there that we're talking here that needs to be clear is that's the way they're wired to hint. And, and even though they wasn't talking before, they even, like for instance, if we're riding in the car, most of the time a woman would say, I'm cold. She doesn't ask if you turn down, well, can you turn that up or turn that down? It's I'm cold. So you know right then she's telling you what to do, okay? And you're not picking up the hint, okay? So <laughs> what, what we're saying here is to be straightforward, men would appreciate much more if the woman would, just be uh, straightforward. Well, listen, we're out of time. Are we? Uh, we're out of time. Oh. We have to go. But this has been extraordinary. Happy New Year to Happy you. Happy New Year. And it's 2017. Yes. We want to say to you that we love you and appreciate you. There's a website. Go to it. Journey to Greatness broadcast. Go to it and enjoy the broadcast. If you missed it, you just all you have to do is log on to FWC uh, Charlotte. Click on our website. And also, if we're being a blessing to you, make a generous do donation. Support the ministry so we can continue coming to you by way of television. We love you. Happy New Year. And we're wishing God's very best to you.
extraordinary. This is awesome. Yes. We're so excited to come to you by way of television. Yes. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. This is my co-host, my hey. lovely wife. Bradella Hall Walker. Yes. And we count it a privilege to come to you. Yes, yes. Give the Lord a big, wonderful hand. Yes. We're so excited to come to you by way of television. I want to share with you some powerful truths. I've been married over uh, 30 years, and I want you to know it's been an exciting journey to greatness. And there's a number on your screen. I want you to call and pick up the phone and call in and say, hey, I'm watching Journey to Greatness broadcast. I want to say hello to Detroit. Michigan, my hello, hometown, Detroit. Motor City. I want to say <laughs> uh, hello to my friends in Chicago. Wonderful, Chi Town. All yes. right. Yes, we love you there in Chicago. I want to give a shout out all the way to the West Coast out there in L.A. My wonderful friends out there in L.A. Yes, God bless right. you. Oh, we can't forget our our city there, Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida. Yes, Florida. My, yes. my son's there, and so we're just yes. excited about uh, Florida, and we pastored there for 22 years, and we have had an awesome journey to greatness. Yes. Thank you so much for allowing us to come into your home and place of business and come into your house to share with you our journey to greatness broadcast. And our last show was just phenomenal. Yes, we it closed was. out of, with talking about evil people. Oh, wow, that was incredible. <laughs> it was an evil wife and an evil husband. <laughs> yes. yes. There are evil people in the world wow. today. I, I usually didn't think that. I used to think everybody was nice. Mm -hmm. Everybody was sweet. Everybody was lovely. Mm -hmm. That's because I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, on a serious note, you know, there are evil people in the world today. And, and, uh, but God is the answer, which we know yes. that he's able to change a heart. He's the only one that can. And uh, I want you to do me a favor. If you're watching by way of television, I want you to... Uh, call someone, pick up the phone and call a friend, call a neighbor, call a co-worker, call somebody. Just call and say, <laughs> hey, Dr. Randall and Bradella Hall Walker, Journey to Greatness broadcast, they're on again, and um, they're going to be a blessing to us today. And sit there and enjoy us and uh, let us come to you and just share with you our Journey to Greatness and give you some revelation truth on your marriage. Because so often, uh, marriage is in a divorce. Today... The enemy is attacking the marriage. Yes, He's out to right. destroy yes. marriages. That's He's right. out to keep marriages from making it, mm -hmm. keep people from getting married. You know, that's the tool that the enemy uses in homosexuality. He's out to destroy marriages. He's out mm -hmm. to, to discredit the woman's wound and, and uh, so she cannot bear children. In any way he can pervert that and keep that from happening, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. But I thank God for my lovely wonderful, awesome, extraordinary wife that the Lord gave to me, so precious in our 30 years of journey to greatness. And so we want to share with you some tools, some practical things, and how you can make your marriage work. Because you might be married to a strong-willed man, or you might be married to a strong-willed woman, and you are so frustrated. You're up to here. You say, I can't, I, mm -hmm. I'm just done. I'm tired of being bossed around. I'm tired of being pushed around. I'm tired of being to told what to do. I'm tired of, of them calling all the shots and treating me like I'm less than. Well, we're going to help empower your life today, and we're going to help you who are strong to bear the infirmities of the weak and surrender yourself and pull your spouse up. So often we can rise above them, but you have to grow together. That's the one thing that I can appreciate about our marriage, that we had to grow together. Yes. We couldn't grow apart. There were... A time when, as, as my wife alluded to in an earlier show, where we came together, it was the honeymoon, and then we grew together, and then we had to deal with life. We had to deal with reality. We had to come together and deal with the problems and the issues. And you know what? It's one thing to have problems on, on, on the outside. It's, that's another thing. But then to have it on the inside as well is really bad. When, right. when you're already facing a world, a cruel world, a world that doesn't mean you any good, that's out to, to uh, just dominate you, control you, and rip you off. I'm just amazed at how companies today and people today are so selfish. It's all about me, myself, and I. Where's the love? You remember that wonderful song that came out? I think it was, uh, I can't think of who it was. Where is the love? I don't, can't think of who it was. But anyway, beautiful song. Where's the love today? And I think the love is in the church today, and I think the church needs to rise up and let people see that love that 
husband and wives can have, that we can be the role model for society once again. You know, back in the day, we were just discussing off the set how individuals used to have that mentality and all oh, those shows like the Cosby Show and, and uh, so name some of, what are some of the other shows that used to, Leave it to Beaver, all, and uh, um, the Partridge the, Oh, man, that's right. Don't mention Bonanza. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And so all of those old shows, they, have, yeah. they depict very good images, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, but today, we, we know that that's not the case. But you can make a difference in your marriage. It just takes you to say, hey, I understand the way it is, but I'm going to do something about it. And not begin to... Uh, or let me say it like this, not continue to be at each other's throat, right. fighting, arguing, because right. you're not going to accomplish anything. Trust right. me, you're not right. going to win. And that's the thing. You know, if you win, somebody loses. That's right. So you don't want to win. You want both parties to win in a relationship. Right. You want right. your spouse to win, and you want to win, both to win. Because if you win, then they lose. You don't want them to lose. Why? Because they're part with you. You are one. So we're going to deal with today an interesting subject that I think is going to really touch, move, and inspire you and help you in your marriage. And we have been doing a series on the strong-willed woman. And stay tuned because coming soon, it will be the strong-willed man. But we, we are just enjoying this wonderful broadcast, <laughs> Journey to Greatness broadcast with Dr. Randall and Bradella Hall Walker. And I want to take a time, just a moment before we go into uh, the uh, actual nuts and bolts of everything. I want to thank my producer, Lanal James, for the awesome job that he does in our production. Yes, give him a big, wonderful, hearty thank you. We're, we're so grateful to you for all you do for, for us in our ministry. Well, as we tackle the strong-willed woman, I want to talk about the importance of unity. I want to talk about how you can unify with your husband or your spouse and become one. Paul talks about it as a mystery. How two individuals can be one. You know, it talks about, in, in the Word of God, it says that a man shall leave his father and, and mother and cleave yes. to his spouse. Cleave. Now, that word cleave, it's amazing. In the Old Testament, that word cleave actually means to glue, yes. like super glue, you know, stick to it, that kind of thing. <clears throat> And permanent, that's what it was meant for. But isn't it amazing that today, cleave today, means to separate. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how the word has diminished and lost its value. And over time, as my wife alluded to in a previous show, that over time, marriages, they, they, they lose their flavor. They lose that, that closeness. They grow apart. They grow separate. And the worst thing can happen is they get their eyes looking in another direction. Mm -hmm. If that should happen, the marriage is almost doomed from the beginning. That's right. Because once a person is looking in another direction, then they're going to justify reasons why things are falling apart. It's all, they're going to point the finger on the, at the other one. It's their fault to justify them and their actions so they can feel comfortable about what they want to do and, and the and they're thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. But if God put you together, I want to encourage you to work your marriage out and seek counseling. And uh, there's a number on your screen. If your marriage is in trouble, I want you to pick up the phone and call that number, 704-322-8010, and say, hey, Dr. Randall Hall Walker, I want you and Bradella to counsel with us. We'll get on the conference call, and we'll speak to you both and help Bridge you guys back together because it's important that you have a, a third uh, party, right. someone that's neutral, someone that's non-biased, that yes. can be fair and, and tell you the truth. You know, right. you want to hear the truth because you think you're right and, and he thinks he's right and he thinks he's right and you think you're right and, you know, you both think you're, you're right. In reality, uh, most of the time, both of you are wrong because you're fighting each other and that's a no-win situation when you're at each other. So we, we would love to do that for you. Or email us. You can email us at journeytogreatnessbc at gmail.com and send us an email, and we'll respond back to you. We're real personal. You may see us on television. You say, well, we're untouchable. You're untouchable? No, that's not the case. We are people 
We're human. We're people. We love people. We have your best interests at heart, and we want to help impact your marriage. But I want my lovely, darling, sweetheart. You know, it's a song that I just always did love, and I wish I could sing. You know, I grew up. I grew up in Detroit. Motown would be really embarrassed when they knew I was out here trying to sing. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You you would think growing up in Motown because everybody from Detroit should sing. I mean, with all of the talent there in Motown. I grew up there 28 years, but that was not one of my my gifts. But I sure try to tackle it. They'll tell you, I'll jump out there in a minute. My darling, darling baby, my sweet and sexy lady. Thirty over 30 years been married to this incredible woman that God sent me. And yes, she's a strong-willed woman. Yes, sometimes that can work against you. So you think. But I tell you what, it will work for your good. If you have a strong-willed woman, honor her, respect her, appreciate her. And if you have a strong-willed man, honor him. You know, there's so many wimps, men that don't have any backbone, that won't take out the garbage. I remember uh, counseling a couple years ago, and I never will forget it. The, the wife came in my office. She said, Pastor, he's so sorry. <laughs> He won't even take out the garbage. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I contribute that to men not having a, a father figure in the home. Now, there are exceptions. Just some, just, they're just, uh, you know, sort of sloth, slothful and that kind of thing. But that's where a mentor, if you having problems, sir, with being energetic, get you a mentor. Get you somebody that you can believe in, that can speak into your life, that can help you become a strong-willed man so that your will can rise up and you can take charge over the things that's trying to take charge over you and that you can rise up to the occasion and that your wife can, can be proud of you. She can be proud of your accomplishment. Not only her being proud of you, but you become proud, proud of yourself as you look at your accomplishments and look at your achievements because nothing... From nothing leaves nothing. Zero plus zero, 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 take away zero, 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 divided by zero, zero, uh, from zero is zero. Zero equals zero. But nothing is a good place to be because in nothing you can create everything. There was nothing on this earth. It was void, and God created everything. So nothing is not a bad place to be, but it has to be a starting point. Let today be your starting point. Let today be the day that you say, I'm going to rise up and do something different. Because if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. If you want something you never had, and I trust you do, you've got to do something you've never done. So you're going to have to rise up and say, I am going to be a strong-willed man, and I'm going to provide for my family. I'm going to take on responsibility. I'm going to be reliable, to be dependable, and I'm going to be the man that my wife is going to be proud of. Will you say you're going to do that? I want to pray with you right now that God will help you to do that right before I turn it over to my wife. Stretch your hands towards me right now. Yes, sir, I want you to do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that man that's hurting right now, that's wanting to give up on life, that's discouraged. And so, Oh, my God, I've, I sense there's some. you thinking about committing suicide. No, 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 no. That's not the answer. That is not the answer. God loves you, and so do I. And I want to talk to you right now and tell you the best is yet to come. Yes, the best is, listen, this is the greatest year of your life, sir. This is the greatest year for you. This is a year that's going to be huge. It's going to be extraordinary for you. All you have to do is say right now that I am going to make my life work. I refuse to live any longer for the enemy. I'm serving him notice to get out of my life, and I'm going to live for God. I'm going to accept the Lord as my personal Savior. So say, dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I confess my sin. I believe you died. I believe you rose again. And I refuse to live for Satan. Jesus, come into my heart right now. If you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to pick up the phone and call that number on your, on your screen and say, hey, I prayed that prayer. And I'm going to call you personally myself. And I'm going to call you. Leave your number. I'm going to call you and send you some personal information on a church in your area that you can go to that can help you become extraordinary for the glory of God. Rodella? Okay. Thank you. That was good.
Uh, some of you may be just tuning in, and to hear him say that I'm a strong-willed woman, you're probably saying, a strong-willed woman, that he called her that, and she just sat there and smiled. You have to identify with yourself. What does my will mean? What, does, what are the reasons? What is my will? Yes. My emotions? Yes. What That's, are my will? Well, the will is, your will is three things. Give me those three. Those three is your mind. My mind. Your will. My will. Your mind, your will. And your emotions. Okay. My will is my soul and my mind and my emotions. A strong will woman has identified with all three. Wow. She understands what her mind is. That's she good. understands her intellect. She knows that her emotions, she has learned how to control her emotions. Right. And she also realized her soul, her spirit belongs to the Lord. She or or she realizes the the greatness that she has inside mm -hmm. of her. So that's what really makes a strong-willed woman a strong-willed woman. And she knows who that she is. That makes you. On. But what about the strong-willed woman that's not uh, uh, in the sense of building herself in a positive way like you have? Well, let me, let me speak on the positive one okay. first, if, if I have enough time. That woman is one who, who's going places, who is on a journey, is on a quest become the best that she could be and when she when she opens up her heart and opens up her life to bring another man in to bring a man into her life she's not looking to see that he's weaker than she she knows mm. that he is to be stronger and she's ha she has accepted that and she embraces the companionship she embraces the security because even in knowing who she is she knows that the man brings the security. Mm -hmm. She knows that the man brings the protection. So that woman is not one who's out to dominate and put down. The other woman on the other side, she hasn't understood who she really is. Mm -hmm. Hers is basically coming from either outside sources. It's either coming from the way she was raised or it's coming from... Uh, anger and some experiences that she's gone through that she developed. That's not a strong will woman, as we said in one of the other shows. That's a hurt woman. Mm, that's a that's woman good. that is toxic. Wow. That is a woman who is out to get, even though she has hid it subliminally when she starts out, mm -hmm. she's really out to get that man yeah. or the person that hurt her. Whoever comes in her life, they take the place of the one that hurt her. Wow, that's good. So that's good. that type of woman. But the real positive, strong-willed woman is a woman who is engaged with herself. She, she lines up with her, her, uh, her will and the will of God within her. So that's why she's, she's constantly going. You see her just, just advancing in her life, accelerating in all that she does because she knows who she is. And when we were talking about how does the man and the woman bring that together if, they're, if there's issues, if they're believers, it, the Bible says that we are the salt of this earth. And if, if the salt has lost its savor, it is of no good. That's right. I believe that the salt of this earth also means that it's marriage. Love is the salt of that marriage. It's what God gave them to bring together to become one. However, if the love is gone, then that means being that salt mm. that they're supposed to be that's good. is gone as well. Wow, that's good. Wow. That is huge. That is, you know, that, that just really, really inspired me greatly. So what does that say? We must keep love in the marriage. And what is love? Love is a giving of oneself yes. unconditionally. Yes. It's not I love you because of what you can do for me. I love you because it's because I love you. And so that's very important that we understand that love is something to be learned. Mm -hmm. You know, love is not something that, that, that is taught. It's caught. You have to catch it. You have to catch the power of love and be able to understand that love is powerful. It is the greatest tool that you have over, over anything is love. Love or over power anything. Love is a, a, a powerful force. The scripture says that God so loved the world yes. that he gave his he only begotten only son. And isn't that awesome because in his giving of his own son and then allowing that love 
if people don't understand God's love, you'll never walk strong in relationship. That's you'll good. never walk strong in marriage. You'll never walk strong in yourself because you don't understand his love. God's love is so pure. Yes. Yet at the same time, it is so strong. It is so endearing. It's so inviting. And when a couple loves one another with that type of love, when there is a, a conflict, that love will cover. Because the Bible says what? Love, love covers, covers a multitude. multitude of sin. It covers everything that can go wrong if we had God's true love. And that's the key. That's the key, having God's love. Mm -hmm. Because the, the natural man cannot understand and the things of the Spirit, the Word of God. Right. So often we're trying to love in the natural. We have to learn how to love with God's love. Agape that love. unconditional yes. love, the agape love. Mm -hmm. And once you get a hold to that, and, and it should be easy because God has given that love to you. Once you accept Christ as your personal Savior, you have Christ in you, you have the agape love. So there's right. nothing that can hinder you from giving it because you got it. Or it shouldn't hinder you. However, unfortunately, with all of the baggage that we brought to the cross mm. in trying to understand this God, the great love that he has for us, it's hard for people to understand it because they're trying to understand it with the mind right. instead of with the heart and the spirit. Right. So when, when they come to God with all this baggage, they don't leave it with him. They... they, they pick up pieces, little particles that they think they should just hold on to. So that then breaks up what the love really should be. It weakens God's love in their own life. Uh -huh. So when their love is weakened and they don't really understand God, then the marriage is weakened. Right. Relationships are weakened. And their and own those, life is weakened. That's right. And those who have experienced love, you have got to hold to God's love in your heart, in that baggage that you have given to him, you have surrendered it all. You remember the day that you gave your heart to the Lord and, and uh, that euphoria, that experience, that overwhelming touch from within. That's the love that you share with everyone. That's the love that you share with everyone you meet, God's love. And you'll find that when you share God's love, that people will be attracted to you They'll be drawn to you because they'll see the God in you. And people respect God most of the time. They should anyway. But the God in you should exuberate so much that there's this overwhelming radiant of love that you have. You know, I'm reminded of a lady. She used to call herself Mother Love. And to my amazement, her love just radiated from this lady. She just hugged everybody. She just kissed everybody. And she just shared her heart with everyone. And that's a good way to be. And especially with your husband, especially with your wife. When they come into the door, welcome them with open arms. Honey, I'm so glad to see you. Or darling, sweetheart, I'm so glad you're home. Don't say, you came home early, didn't you? <laughs> what you doing here? You, you got off early or something? Oh, yeah. wow. Be glad to see you. Wow. Welcome them, because you have no clue what they've gone through. That's you have right. no clue That's what right. they experienced during the day That's on the right. job. They could have had a hard day. The boss could have been riding them, getting on them. So they come in maybe with a little attitude, and then you say, well, what's wrong with you? you know? No, don't, don't, don't do that. Reach out to them and give them that Christ love and embrace them mm -hmm. and say, it's going to be all right. That's the worst thing you can do is badger them and come against them. But the best thing you can do is love them. And embrace them when they come home. Mm -hmm. There's another song that that an oldie but goodie. It said it says it's an understanding melody. Oh, you want me to sing it for you? No, uh, no. But it's an understanding mellow. An understanding mellow. And he sings it anyway. But that that brings about uh, um, some of the glue to a relationship learning how to understand but the only way you can understand is just like being in school you have to learn it first you have to learn it to understand it that's right so if if you want to men i'm speaking to you right now 
Men, if you want to understand your wife, your girlfriend, your relationship, learn her first. Learn her. If you could learn her, you'll understand her. She is more than just an object. She is more than just a sex being. She is a human being. She is a wonderful part of your life, and she will help make you the best that you could possibly be if you could learn her. Learn what she's about. Learn how she ticks. Learn how she laughs. Learn, just watch her. If you just watch her when she does certain things, you will learn her. You'll see that that's the way she is. She has a certain way that she handles certain things. When you learn that, you'll understand it. If she likes to put the towels a certain way, that's because you learned that she handles them this way, and now you understand that that's why the towels are that way. But then at the same time, and that's very good. That's wonderful. Give the Lord a big hand. But, but that's when you know that's someone you want to spend your life with. That's someone that you are committing yourself to. Because initially, you don't have to learn them because you may not want to. Because initially, you may want to hurry up and run, get far away from that person what that you can. What causes that? You, 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 what happens, say you meet them, okay? You meet them, you go over to their, their house, and uh, they introduce you to their parents, and then they start putting uh, you down or start being negative towards you or disrespecting you in front of her parents, talking down to you. That's a time to run. That's not a time to get to know that person. You already got to know them. <laughs> you know, run quickly. So oh, the flip you side. You learn them fast. So you fast. don't have You don't have, then in, in a situation such as that, you don't have to understand them. That's the only right. thing you need to understand is that this is not going to that's work. That's right, right. That's that, right. That, that, that but is one, itself. But, is, one, but once you know that this is the one that you want to pursue, then you get to know them and watch them, watch their moods, watch their actions, and, and, and develop them and, and develop and, and admire them. That's one of the great things. Sit back and admire. You know, that was one of the things that, that really drew me to my wife is I admired her. I admired her. Number one, when I met her, nobody believed that I could have such an awesome woman. That was the first thing. They said, you? You got birdie? Birdie? You? I was like, yeah, ran, random man. What you talking about? You know, it was, that's what I was feeling. But it was really a good feeling that she was known to be a very quality woman. And so I was proud to be able to reach out. So I admired her. I admired the way she walked. I admired the way she talked. You know, very sophisticated uh, lady. And, and I wasn't myself, so quite naturally, not being that way and used to more of the street life myself, I wanted to have a little understanding of uh, uh, Ebonics to a, to a certain degree, but that wasn't her, okay? <laughs> I wanted to talk street just a little bit, but that wasn't her. You know, I was talking about, man, these some bad shoes. And she looked at me, she said, What's wrong with them? You know, I was talking about that they were, you know, awesome, awesome shoes, or they were nice, but, you know, so she didn't, that language. But then I admired that, even though I somewhat had mixed emotions about it, and, um, but I admired her for who she was. Strong-willed woman, she knew who she was, she knew what she wanted to accomplish, she knew where she wanted to go, and she wanted a good man, so I decided to be one. <laughs> and ladies, you can do the same thing. Just know who you are, learn your inner qualities, and let God do the rest. And I guarantee you that man will love you like never before. Don't be mean. Don't try to think that he's against you. If he loves you, you'll feel it, you'll know it. Well, and listen. The two of you will be one. Well, listen, we're, that's right. We're out of time. So delighted you joined us. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. This is my co-host, Fredella Hall Walker. We thank God for you, and we wish God's very best to you. Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. What a joy it is to come to you by way of television and share with you our journey to greatness. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, would you consider making a generous donation? Would you go to our website, FWC Charlotte, and click on Give and make a contribution so we can continue 
to come to you by way of television. Thank you so much for your generous support. Thank you for being a part of our lives and allowing us to come into your living room and share with you Journey to Greatness broadcast. Wishing God's very best to you. What a joy it has been coming to you by way of television. This is our anniversary year, and we're looking forward to going into the next year with you. However, if the support is not there to continue to keep us on the air, we're going to have to say goodbye. Of course, that'll be a sad, bitter day for us. But I want to encourage you right now to consider supporting the ministry so as we celebrate our anniversary, we can go into a new year with you and continue to come to you by way of television. We trust we've been a blessing to you, and if we've been a blessing to you in any way, I want to encourage you to get your checkbook out and write a check, make it payable to Freedom Worship Center of Charlotte, or you say, I don't write checks. You can go to our website, FWC Charlotte, click, click on Give, and make a generous gift so we can stay on the air. Oh, wow. This is fantastic. Hey, yes. Thank you so very much for joining us. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. This is my wonderful co-host, Bradella Hall Walker. Hello. And we're How excited to come to you by way of television and share with you our journey to greatness. We've been married. Oh, my God. I've quit counting. Over 30 years we've been married. <laughs> and I tell you what, it has been a great journey. Those who are watching by way of television, we want to thank you so much for yes, joining us. Thank you. Don't turn that down right now. Call a friend, call a neighbor, call a friend, and tell them I'm watching Journey to Greatness broadcast with Dr. Randall and Bradella Hall Walker, and I'm excited because I've been looking forward to the show. You're watching in Chicago or you're watching in California, wherever you might be watching. We say hello. I want to give a shout out to my son and my grand, uh, my granddaughters, and the great. City of Orlando, yes. Florida. Yes. Ma, I love you. Oh, my mom would be upset if I didn't say hello to my wonderful mom in Detroit, Detroit, Ooh, Michigan. Yes. Annie Walker, yes. we love you, love you. And all of my friends all over the country, I say thank you for joining me on the Dr. Randall Bedella Hall Walker Show. We're excited. We have an awesome, extraordinary, wonderful, amazing program for you today. Yes. We're going to be dealing with the strong will child. Wow, the strong will child. I'll tell you how to deal with him. Beat his butt. No, no, I'm just doing <laughs> No, no, strike, cut, edit. <laughs> no, on a serious note, um, there is a, 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 a way to handle strong will children because so often we think the way to handle them is to beat them or, or punish them, and we never really connect with them. So we're going to give you some ideas, give you some ways how to handle a strong-willed child. Now, we are strong-willed. I'm a strong-willed man, my wonderful wife. She's a, a strong-willed woman, and uh, this is my sweetheart. Hey, I'd be remiss if I didn't sing my, my favorite song. My darling, darling, baby. <laughs> My sweet and sexy lady. Oh, I keep forgetting I'm on Christian <laughs> television. I got to quit that. Oh, my goodness. But I tell oh you what, goodness. this uh, woman has been so extraordinary <laughs> in my life. And my journey to greatness has been because she has stood with me during my ups and downs, my struggles, my battles, my tests, my trials. She was there for me. When everybody else would have just left me and said, I'm done with him. As a matter of fact, when we first got married, people had the nerve to try to talk her out of marrying me. I don't know what was wrong with them. They were <laughs> demon possessed or something. I don't know. No, no, not, not really. But the fact it was, I had issues. I had problems. You know, I grew up in the street of Detroit, and I was going for bad, thought I was tough, thought I was God's gift to man, and uh, just a real rebel. 
and no doubt about it. But God delivered me, set me free, and I'm just so grateful and honored the Lord for delivering me and setting me free, giving me a new mind, a new heart, new direction, and new purpose, new, new goal. I'm a brand new man. I have no doubt about it, no question in my mind. But being a brand new man, I had to grow and develop, and there were things I had to learn. There were things I had to work out. And being a strong-willed person, because I was a strong-willed kid, then I was a strong-willed adult, and being in that, that way, there were so many things that I had to learn because I was very dogmatic, very arrogant, very cocky, very haughty, and um, those were things that I had to work out that didn't just disappear overnight. I had to retrain my thinking, refocus my emotions. I had to do some mental adjustment. I had to get a vision for what's possible. It was just I had to get a total makeover, no question about it. I had to get a new personality. I had to find my gifts, my talents, and, and uh, it was just great because my gifting took me places that my character wouldn't keep me, and my personality took me places that uh, my character wouldn't keep me. And so I had to work on my character mm -hmm. as a person. Because if you you know you can have a strong character and your personality won't keep you, wow. or you can have a strong uh, a character and your personality won't keep you, and vice versa. In other words, what I'm saying. So there is an art to moving into your greatness and becoming extraordinary and mastering you. I tell you what, that's the one thing that I enjoy today. That I have took authority in my life. I take charge in my life. I run my life. I don't let. Things and circumstances and situations control me, dominate me, and run me and call shots. I'm my own man, and I thank God for it. But that was a process. That was allowing Jesus to be my mentor. That was allowing him to That's guide me. Good. That yes. was trusting the he Jesus. That was relying upon Jesus. That was getting the mind of Christ. Letting this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. And beginning to think like God, act like God, talk like God, walk like God, do everything like God. And no, oh, I wasn't perfect all the time. And I'm not going to all, I'm the human side. And there's a great joy in being human. You know, I enjoy you know, it's so great to just be a human being because <laughs> you're capable of error. You're capable yeah. of making a mistake. Yeah. You're capable of messing up. That's not a time to beat yourself up because you make a mistake. That's not a time to just give up on life, throw in the towel. I'm going to kill myself. You know, I don't want to live no more because you messed up. You might have got pregnant out of, without, without a husband or you might have uh, did some things, made some mistakes in life. That is not a time to beat yourself up. That a that's a time to learn from your mistakes and embrace who you are and get present to where you are, but just know where you're going. So that's what I did. I, I got present to my circumstances and where I was at. And I said, I am going to do something with my life. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, and I'm sick and tired of being tired and sick. Mm -hmm. And I said, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. I'm through. I'm done. I can't do this lifestyle no more. I can't do it. And I reached out to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he forgave me, gave me a new slate, wiped my slate clean, gave me a new beginning, and then gave me a darling, darling baby. Gave me my, <laughs> my sweetest ex lady. And that's all I needed. You know what the scripture says? It's not good for man to be alone. I, I got that totally. Amen. I understand that. God said, me an extraordinary, wonderful wife that stood with me and helped me through my journey to greatness. And I'm here coming to you by way of television to share my story because God has been so great to me. You know, I was shot in the head and left for dead in the streets of Detroit. My life was almost over, but God had his hand upon me because he had a purpose. And I heard someone say that you got to spend your life finding your purpose. In life, finding your purpose should be your purpose in finding your purpose. And so I found That's my good. purpose, That's and good. my purpose is to come to you by way of television and share with you that you can succeed, you can make it, that your greatness is within you. There's inside of you, there's a genius. Mm -hmm. There's an extraordinary human being. There's a person that have creativity and co-created pow power with God, and you can do all things through Christ who will strengthen you. I know what I'm talking about. It's too late to listen. Studio audience, I'm telling you, and you were watching by way of television, I'm telling you, it's too late to change my mind. 
I'm telling you, I'm sold out. I know what God is able to do. I know what God is with God, all things are possible. I know I can do all things through, through him that strengthened me. I know I'm the head and not the tail. I know that my God will supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I know that I'm more than a conqueror through him. I'm telling you what, I am fully, fully empowered and engaged in who I am. And I live life powerfully, I live life on purpose, and I live life intentional. But now that, as a result of being a strong-willed child, mm -hmm. one that dad would say, you can't go there. I want to know why I can't go. I want to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you need to stay in the house. Why? Mm -hmm. Why do I need to stay in the house? Why, why can't I do what I want to do? So I've always been the type of person that felt like I could do what I want to do. It's my prerogative. Do, no, 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 I'm just teasing. You can't do what you want to do. That's, like, that's what gets you in trouble. Wanting to do. I didn't realize that I needed a mentor at the time. I didn't realize that I was one of those energetic kids that was excited and ignited and enthused and infused. But I just needed direction. I just needed someone to mentor me, to guide me, to direct me. And I was so rebellious. You know, one of the worst things you can do is develop a spirit of rebellion. But I had the spirit of rebellion. If you told me to go right, I'm going left. <laughs> if you told me to go up, I'm going down. I just didn't want to do what anybody tell me. I was a strong will child and I learned something because one of the things that cost me a, almost a lifetime of misery I disobeyed my parents mm -hmm. I ended up and my I ruined my life no question about it I'm telling you what the decisions that I made I ruined my life because I didn't want them telling me what to do I didn't want them calling any shots in my life I didn't want I wanted to be my in the individual me I wanted to find and discover myself I didn't realize that that's a good thing but you just gotta be looking for the right thing <laughs> because you'll find you will find something that right. you don't want to find right. and so I began to search and I had this quest for trying to find the answers to life I wanted to know why I was created I, I was always wanting to know why am I on this earth what's my purpose you know what why am I here and I had to learn that my purpose for life that God created me to worship him I said wow you mean to say that's why I'm here yes and to conform into the image of him to be like God to favor God to know God to be in relationship with God that's my purpose and when I found my my purpose it was no stopping me now <laughs> ain't no stopping me wow. now I'm on the move <laughs> yes that's what happens when you understand your purpose and so many people never find their purpose especially a strong-willed person because they're so busy finding all the other things that, that attracts them and they never find themselves so many people the graveyard is full of folk who died never understanding who they were the difference that they were supposed to make mm. the assignments that they wow. were supposed to accomplish and the things that they were supposed to get done they never got that done because they were hoodwinked bamboozled deceived and tricked by the enemy that they, they sold them a dream that wasn't a reality That's right. but Jesus would never do that once you connect with him he'll guide your steps he'll direct you and even though you're a strong-willed person you can take a licking and keep on ticking but you'll That's keep good. on going no matter what you face you'll be like that energized bunny you just keep going Going and going and going and nothing will stop you you are unstoppable with the anointing of God the anointed one and his anointing flowing in you you're unstoppable That's I'm good. telling you the sky's the limit of what you can accomplish so as a result of being rebellious and and and, and rebelling in life and doing my own thing I had a 10-year run out there in the streets that literally almost took my life it was it was really a sad situation because I was stuck like Chuck no no reflection on Chuck no reflection on you Chuck but I was stuck and uh, and I couldn't get out I mean I was bound I was tied up and I learned that I had to master me and I found what the scripture says when it says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft I understand how demon powers can trick you That's and right. enslave you right. and empower you. They can. Yeah, and you a puppet. They they controlling you. 
I was a puppet. I could not believe that. You know, confession is good for the soul, but bad for the reputation. <laughs> I, I was a puppet. I mean, the enemy had me go here, go there, go do that. Go. I said, go do it. Yes, I go do it. And go listening to the enemy, listening to the voice in my head and doing things. And the word of God says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Because my parents, as a strong-willed uh, son, they were telling me not to do things that I didn't pay them no attention. I'm going to do it. And that was the worst thing. Tell me not to do something. That's the worst thing you can do. You should just tell me, go rob, folks. Just, just go rob. Then I, I probably won't do nothing. But you say, don't do it. I'm like, oh, why not? I'm going to do, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's amazing how our minds work. It's amazing. You know, it's like you dare to do wrong. You know, when, when people tell you don't do it, then it's like, I'm going to do it because you told me don't do it. <laughs> and the scripture says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Why is that? Why does the, the scripture say that? Here's the reason why. It says that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft because authority is really great. Listen, you who are watching by way of television, make sure you have a pastor. Make sure you're under authority. There's power in being under authority because that authority is a covering. It's a protection for you. And parents are your covering. They're your protection. And as long as you obey them, you're covered. But when you get from up under authority, you expose yourself to demon powers and devils that's guaranteed to be too strong for you to handle. And before you know it, you're trapped because you rebel. You're not, not covered. You're not protect, protected. Boy, listen, I would tell anybody, don't ever leave a church until you have a church. Don't ever leave a church. Don't ever leave a church till you have a church because you need that spiritual covering. You get from out front of that church, go out there and, and say, well, I'm just going to hang out until God leads me. The devil can lead you. And next thing you know, you've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, tricked, and deceived and find yourself in a situation. We had a pastor friend of mine, bless his heart, gone. he's uh, left us, unfortunately, through, and I won't go into the details of that because it's still sore in my spirit. But all I can tell you is rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And when you rebel, you expose yourself. See, you expose yourself to demon powers that you're not going to have enough power to overcome them. Those demons going to have a field day with you. Those demons going to take control. Those demons going to dominate. And you got no recourse because you out of the will of God. God ain't backing that rebellion. <laughs> uh, God is not standing with that rebellion. When you out there with the demons and the devils, then they can do what they want to do to you. Because that's why the scripture says the rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Because you out there with demons and devils, you out there with the demonic forces, you out there with satanic spirits, and they're calling the shots, and you are their puppet. And they just telling you what to do. But the moment you come to yourself, like the prodigal son, I love that story. Just an awesome story. The prodigal son, the scripture says that he came to himself. My God, what a revelation. If we could every day just get present to coming to ourselves, shaking ourselves, you know, coming to ourselves. We can't get tricked by what demons and devils want to do. But a strong will. You parents, I want to encourage you. Don't try, and I know some of you, your methods and your techniques, you say, I tried everything. But the best way you can work with that strong-willed child is to love the hell out of them. And when I say love them, I mean don't fight against them. Befriend them and teach them and train them and tell them why. Don't just tell them because I said so. You can't do it. Because I said so. I'm your daddy, and that's your mama, and what we say go. And when you don't want to do what we say, hit the door. You know, you don't want to tell them that. Yeah. Or definitely you don't want to tell them, I'm going to look, you do it again, I'm going to kill you before the police does. Wow. You don't want to tell your kids things like that. <laughs> but that's things that we say that we think we're being effective. When you have a strong-willed child, that's the time to befriend them and steer them and mentor them in the right direction because they have a will. And let me tell you something, you're not going to break their will. The only thing you can do is direct their will. 
because you're not going to break them. You may try to break them. You can do all the social things. You can punish them, beat them. I know my mom, she thought punishing me was going to be the key. And she said, you can't watch TV for a week. <laughs> yeah, can't watch TV for a week. I go in the room after school. How many more days I got? I got three more days. Thank you. How many more days I got? Two more. Thank you. How many more days you got? One more. Oh, great. Thank you. How many days your punishment's on? Oh, thank you. Okay. No big deal. Hey, I can take it because I'm a strong-willed person. I can take punishment. I can take, you know, the, the what happens because I'm a strong-willed person. That wasn't going to work with me. But, of course, they thought that that was the key because somebody educated them, punish them. Because they tried to beat the hell out of me. That didn't work. <laughs> Did not work. No, I'm tough. Do you know who you're talking to? This is random man. Okay? So it, it, that wasn't going to help me. But that's from a, a, a young man's perspective. Now, my darling, darling sweetheart, she's a very strong-willed woman, and she was a strong-willed child. So I want, from her perspective, to share with, with the rest. And then we're going to come and pray with you in just a short. But I want her to share about the strong-willed young lady. All Give right. her a big hand. But they'll all walk. Thank you so much. I've sat and I've listened to my husband sharing about him and how the strong-willed child grows up to become, which is what happened to him. What I want to say about the, the uh, strong-willed child is they are amazing. <laughs> and looking at it, in, in hindsight, even at myself and other uh, young children, is if the parent would just keep that same mentality, that same passion, that same love they had for the child when they were carrying them in their arms, that they have when the child began to walk, and they see how that child is. If you would, be, if you would sit there and watch them, they are amazing characters. These are children who have their own mind, they think a certain way. They're very analytical. They they are a why they are why kids. Why do we have to do this and why do we have to do that? And I recall when I was uh, younger, we had to watch. We watched television on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, but we couldn't watch TV on Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. And for I that just didn't make sense to me. So I went to my dad and I said to him, why, why can't we watch TV on Sundays and Wednesdays and Friday? And my dad said, because you're saved. So I said, okay, and I walked away and I went, what? Yeah. <laughs> so I turned around and I came back and I said to him, I was, and at that time, because you know that we were uh, uh, of that, that strict family, so we called him father. I said, father, can I ask you this question? And he says, yeah. I said, okay, if I'm saved on Sunday and Wednesday and Friday, then what am I on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday? So either I'm saved all the time or I'm not saved at all. My dad looked at me, and he went in his room and he shut the door, and all I could imagine was that belt that was hanging behind the door. It was coming out at me. I just knew it. But instead of that, he came out with his coat and his hat on. He said, let's go for a ride. I said, he's going to kill me. They're not going to find my body. I just know this is what's going to happen. My dad's just going to kill me. So we sat in the car. He never looked at me as he drove the whole time. And I sat there. And I'm like, where am we going? Next thing I know, we were going to the church. That meant I was, I was going to see the pastor. So he took me in to see the pastor. But he went in to see the pastor. And I could hear him saying, of all my children, she doesn't give me any problems. She asks questions that I cannot answer. He says she's a rare breed. That's what she is. I can remember hearing my dad say that. So when they finished, I could hear them praying, and he came back out, and we got back in the car, and we're heading home. I said, well, I haven't reached my destination. He still could kill me, so I don't know what he's going to do. So we get home, and when we did, from that moment on, we could watch TV every day. What was it? Wow. What was it that happened? A question was asked my dad 
that was never asked before. Wow, that's good. These are children that are in school that parents, uh, teachers don't know how to handle. If they could just, if they could just see them as a strong-willed child, a child, most of those kids are not set and designed for the classroom setting. Wow. These kids are very intelligent. They're very analytical. These are kids that see our own, our other son, Donnie. Yes. Donnie's the same way. Donnie will go to school, get in trouble all the time because he tore computers apart. Right. But he could put them back together. That's right. And today he owns his own computer business. That's right. My son was the same way. My son could draw. He could do anything he want, and they would still have a problem with him because his questions was why. Why do we have to do that? They wanted to advance him in class and all those things. These are kids that are so amazing. Not that the other children aren't, but there are some that advance faster than others. Strong-willed kids advance much faster than other kids do because they have a, a, it, a, it's like a sixth sense inside of them that they use, or they're using all of their five senses, and it's helping them to, to advance in, in, in business. I, but I guarantee you that everyone who owns their own business, including our President Trump, I, he is definitely was a strong-willed child. You could tell just the way he is now. Right. Um, you can tell those who are were strong-willed children. They're the ones who are successful. Our right. former President Obama was all the presidents, I believe, were strong-willed because they're looking at the nation. They're looking at the country. They're looking at people and saying, why is it this way? What can I do to fix it? Wow, this is so, so good. So people like, like you and people like myself are placed in positions, I believe, spiritually, strategically, that we can help make a difference in this world. So parents, look at your children, as beautiful as they were on your lap who couldn't speak, and now they can, and you're trying to shut them up. Wow. <laughs> Don't look at them that way. See what they're, hear what they're saying. Hear what they're telling you. These children are not just being rebellious. These are just interesting children. If you go to a restaurant, and you order something, then why did they fix it like that? Look at the child and look at what they fixed. They may have seen something you didn't. So really acknowledge them for who they are. Wow. Love them through. Instead of just saying, don't do that, tell them why you don't want to, them to do it. I remember That's right. we would stand up on a chair, and then we were told, get down off that chair. If we didn't get down, we got a spanking. So when I had my son, he would stand up on a chair. I was his son. Don't stand up on that chair. You may fall. All of a sudden, this light bulb went off in my head, honey, and I said, why didn't our parents tell yeah, us tell that? that. Could have saved me some scars. Right. Well, why listen, they, this has been that? awesome. <laughs> next week, we're going to pick up. We're going to pick up next week. We're going to pick up next week with, with my wonderful wife. She's going to open up. We're out of time. As a matter of fact, we've gone over just a few. But this has been great. This has been wonderful. I want to thank, thank our wonderful studio audience for being with us. We're so grateful thank for you. you all. Yes, thank, thank you, you so very so much. much. And I want to say to you, those who are watching by way of television, we pray for your strong willed yes. children right yes. now in Love Jesus' it. name. And we wish God's very best to you. Yes. Again, I'm Dr. Randall and Bradella Hall Walker. And we wish God's very best to you. Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. What a joy it has been coming to you by way of television. This is our anniversary year. And uh, we're looking forward to going into the next year with you. However, if the support is not there to continue to keep us on the air, we're going to have to say goodbye. Of course, that'll be a sad, bitter day for us. But I want to encourage you right now to consider supporting the ministry so as we celebrate our anniversary, we can go into a new year with you and continue to come to you by way of television. We trust we've been a blessing to you. And if we've been a blessing to you in any way, I want to encourage you to get your checkbook out and write a check Make it payable to Freedom Worship Center of Charlotte. Or, you see, I don't write checks. You can go to our website, FWC Charlotte, click, click on Give, and make a generous gift so we can stay on the air. We're counting on your support. We need your support to continue to do what we're doing. So trust we've been a blessing, and if we have, we need your support. Wishing God's very best to you. Again, I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker, and I have enjoyed coming to your living room, place of business, and speaking the word of God to you. So love you, and again, wishing God's very best to you. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. What a joy it is to come to you by way of television and share with you Journey to Greatness broadcast. If we're being a blessing to you, would you be so kind to consider going to our website and giving a generous gift so we can stay on the air? Go to fwccharlotte.com and click on Give and support the ministry so we can stay on the air. Thank you so very much and wish God's very best to you.